I honestly, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure uh, who Ryan Higa is. Will we, we will Google him right now, actually. Who is Ryan Higa? Whoops. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's fine. I'm just trying to make moves because I'm running out of time. <laughs> Hi chat, how is everybody doing this fine afternoon? Hi chat, how is everybody doing this? And I forgot to beat my own stream again. Well, what a surprise there. <laughs> Nothing like a scuffed starting soon for the 10th time. Um, I honestly, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure uh, who Ryan Higa is. Will we, we will Google him right now actually. Who is Ryan Higa? Oh! He's a comedian. Okay, this is pretty cool. I mean, I only I only found out that I was gonna coach him about 10 minutes ago, so I was like, okay, I am down. I am so down. Um, but I really had no idea, <laughs> you know. He's an OG YouTuber. Okay, that is super cool. Um, as you guys know, I kind of joined social media about three weeks ago. So, let's see, Ryan Higa. Oh! That's pretty cool. Huh. I respect that. He has, like, the population of Canada as his subscribers. <laughs> oh my god. I'm- he's a celebrity. <laughs> okay. Um... I am now really, really embarrassed to admit that I didn't know he, who he was. Nobody tell, tell him this. Um, you know, it's totally, totally fine. I'm actually just gonna show you guys what what we're doing. We're just gonna we're just gonna do a little bit of research, I think, um, for the next bit. Uh, wow, this is a uh, this is pretty poggers, I think. I mean, he's obviously a very, very talented YouTuber, and, um, you know, we'll see how his talent comes over into chess. <laughs> I mean, he's been streaming Valorant Minecraft on Twitch for two months. Oh, that's pretty cool. Hey, guys, look, 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 look. I... I, like, do not use social media. <laughs> I, I literally just don't. Um, it's it's like not a huge concept for me. And I mean, as I try to, as I become a streamer and I'm like, yeah, you know, social media is really, really important. Um, I, I do think that, you know, I need, I have a lot to learn. I have a lot to learn. And, you know, chat, chat, you guys are actually here for me um, to, <laughs> to remind me of all the things I don't know. Right, guys? Right? Like literally, literally, um, I don't know a lot. You guys are here for it. Uh, that's that's why I appreciate you all so much because you guys can tell me everything I don't know. Um, so I mean, <laughs> I don't like. Okay, well, we're gonna spend the next fifteen minutes googling him, um, and I hope he doesn't find that weird. I actually hope. I actually hope he doesn't find that weird. Like, is it weird if I do this? Like, is it, is it weird if I, like, just Google him for the next few minutes? Um, watch Nice Guys. Okay. As I play this video for you guys, I'm gonna clean up the back of my room so that I don't have, like, suspicious stuff lurking for when I stream. I had all my clothing lying in the background. Um, okay. All right. Okay, thanks, Clutch. Thank you. Hope you have a great day, too. Wait, which one's Ryan? Is this Ryan? Okay, there's like more than one Asian. This one's Ryan, right? <laughs> okay. This one, this one, this one. Okay. This one. Okay. <laughs> Wait, that's not Ryan. 
No, this one? <laughs> Ryan's the one in the pink shirt. No, that can't be him. That's not, that's not him. Like, someone just said it's the Asian guy, and there was an Asian guy for like the, the first, like, you know, however many minutes of this, so I just assumed it was him. No, the other pink shirt? Oh, okay, okay, that looks like him. Yeah, I'm saying this one, this one. Okay. <laughs> They really don't- they don't look the same to me. I was just saying, you guys said Asian dude, and there was an Asian dude for the first three minutes. So I had to figure it out. Okay, we got it. They're both pink played. Okay, so the Asian guy in pink played. The other guy is, like, white. Okay. No, the other guy's also, like, in played. This guy's also in played. <laughs> so, like, I don't know. I don't know, guys. I was pretty sure he was Asian. But once again, I didn't want to say anything because I'm like, if I say something wrong, I'm actually gonna get clipped and it's gonna get shipped and it's gonna be clipped out of context. So, <laughs> it's plaid? Okay. Alright, this is pretty cool. Uh, uh, this is my kind of humor. <laughs> um, wait, how do you message people on Twitter? How do you message people on Twitter? He's supposed to message me. On oh, okay, never mind. I got it. I got it. I figured it out. <gasps> no, that only different is a humor. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I like the humor. I like the humor. Yes, okay, so I, I figure out open Twitter. Um, this one looks good. Tonight on Channel 6 News, the increase of violence towards Asian Americans continue to rise during the Guys, coronavirus pandemic. Guys, Zoomer is like TikTok and Instagram. Twitter is like Boomer. Coming up okay, next. let's get that clear here. Good evening, I'm Ryan Anchorman and this is Channel 6 News. <laughs> This is pretty cool, While though. While COVID-19 infections continue to ramp up here in the United States, so have the reported hate crimes against Asian Americans. But is this phenomenon something that is... Yeah, we're doing lessons with him in like 10 minutes. Or is it something that we've all misunderstood? So... They're being beaten. Their property's defaced. Why there's okay. a huge spike in Asian American hate crimes here in the U.S. during this pandemic. I spoke a reaction to streamer? Well, I'm just trying to do some Central research about, about my students. exactly why. So why do you think there's been such a large increase in violence towards Asian Americans? Dong well, Sayade. the coronavirus was reported to have started in Wuhan, China, which, according to our research, is, in fact, an Asian country. Okay. These aren't copyrighted, right? I swear, when they dance, I just cannot. You have to look at their hair. I still watch him, Caitlin. This whole time. Okay. I don't get it. I mean, they don't even speak Korean. Like, <laughs> Making fun of K-pop so bands? I can't even understand. Oh. What's there to get, man? It's a group of really good-looking Asian guys. Okay, do I dare say that? And dance. I'm just gonna I'm call him Ryan. Good-looking Asian. Well, I'm just I gonna mean, call him Ryan. No. Dancing is um no. no. I love K-pop. No. This We're is pretty Asian. hype. Yeah, right? Yes. 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 You can learn to sing and dance, you can learn to be Asian. <laughs> what makes them so different then? It's because they're all like dark K-pop. They got rows of abs. Nine. Watch his oldest video. Why What's his oldest that, video about? Why don't we just make a group? Why don't we why don't we make a K-pop band? Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Wait a second. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, guys, sure you just said yourself. We can't see your dance. Well, I mean, we can auto tune ourselves. Yeah. 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 Right. I don't know if something's being copyrighted. I hope he didn't copyright his videos. Okay. This is interesting. This is interesting. I mean, his YouTube videos look great from what I've seen so far. <laughs> I mean, I actually love K-pop, so I mean, I, I don't care if people make fun of it. I don't know, I don't care if people make, make fun of it. Everybody was kung fu fighting. This is like, old. Like, this is old, old. 
Like what are- like these are like the VCR or something like Like I don't know what this is Oh 2007 Wow This is exactly like those old old Kofu movies Okay uh, it's- it's- it's been, uh, okay, let's see what else he's got. Let's see what else he's got. Yeah, I mean, it's- there's nothing to do. Okay, this one's quite recent. Yeah, okay, I use chess CDs, but that's different. That is different. Oh my god. 30 days? Hell no! Wait, are all of these him? Like, does he like play every single character in his own? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Seriously, That's pretty funny. Yeah, he can. Okay, these are all him. I take. I am so over this pandemic. I'm literally gonna. Die I love it. Man, this is. This so is pretty cool. Crazy. I mean, I can barely tell, uh, honestly. Oh does anyone have uh, extra toilet paper? Like, do they care? Yeah, the the okay, wait. How do I know if somebody adds me on? Wow, they're all him. Wow, that's pretty cool. I'm so sick and tired of being alone and watching movies in my home and I don't know what. Okay, this is a bop. <laughs> this is a bop. I like it. I like it. This is like he's actually good at this. Does he sing though? Does he like sing these songs? Like this is genuinely good. <laughs> like like it's just like he's just talented. I could fix that clock that's an hour off TikTok, different shirt, whoa, different spot, but that's just too hard to do. This is nice. I like it. All right, um, favorite, same like your favorite artist. How to say like, this is from seven years ago. Welcome, I'm Ryan. It's got 50 million views. And today I'm going to be teaching you how to sing like some of your favorite artists. As much as you think you can't sing or as much as you know you can, you can't. Yeah, but by the time you finish this video, and with enough work and effort, one day, you might be able to sound like this! Now, one lesson. The first artist you're gonna learn how to sound like... Think of every tough guy you ever met with a big ass chain. Now double that. That's how tough you gotta be when you rap like two chains. And once you got that down, all you have to do is rap about things that are blatantly obvious. She got a big booty, so I call a big booty. Or a line like this. I'm in the kitchen. Yams everywhere. Or all I want for my birthday is a big booty hoe. Yes, those are actual lyrics from his song, Birthday Song. But really, once you perfect your two chains, you can do it with anything. <laughs> I like this lap, yo, that's why I purchased this lap. I'm in the kitchen, not anymore. All I want for my birthday is a big food at home. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, gotta poop right now. Oh, okay. JT likes to sing high. So the technique here is. Yeah, he's singing is a lot better than mine, not gonna lie. I can't wait till I get you on the floor, cause I'm looking. Sounding like Nicki Minaj is simple. All you have to do is rap while you're slowly leaning back on an exercise ball. I said, excuse me, you're a hell of a guy. I mean, mama, my, my, you're like Pelican Boy. I mean, you're so shy and I'm loving your tie. Just look at the guy with a thing on his eye. <laughs> he's not, he's actually pretty good. He's actually so good at this. Probably can't. It's natural God-given talent. So he's like a comedian, like a Just YouTube comedian very specifically. Sexy, almost to the point where it sounds like you're going to cry, but you don't. Okay, <laughs> he's amazing. Everyone else but you two. Well, let's see, I'm probably gonna need about one, two, three, four more people for this part, so. 
Can't get punched in no jitsu! You guys ready? Ready? Five, six, seven. Eight. Remember that when you are feeling sad. I want him to finish these! I want him to finish these! I want the whole thing! It's so good! Like, he needs, like, the part, like, 10 and part 20s of these. Like, he really just needs to, like, do everything himself. Now take what you do with Drake and go even lazy. Kinda like you're on drugs. He's got a sequel to this? figure out Huh, interesting. Pretend like you're rapping at 3 a.m. in the morning with your mom sleeping in the same room and she already woke up to scold you once. <laughs> On the pimps in the crib, huh? Drop Will you shut up? up? <laughs> you sound like T-Pain. I'm already doing it. Okay, best of luck, Ebad. Best of luck. To sound like T-Pain, I'm already doing it. Yeah. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a go. Have a great LSAT, E man. Hope you it's hope you like ace it. What? I said it's kind of like your heart of hearing. What? I said it's kind of like your heart of hearing. Okay. <laughs> you're sad because you just lost the love of your life, and you're trying to get over them by pushing them out, but you can't because you're just constipated with love. <laughs> Where are you? And find so sorry. <laughs> He's actually just sitting on the toilet, though. The He's actually just, just sitting, sitting on the toilet. <laughs> now make the sound of your voice cracking when you're going through puberty. I'm going through puberty. Put those two together and you got country. I will never sing, never. You remember the Stitch voice from Lilo and Stitch? Oh, Hannah means family. Good. Now do that with a deeper voice. Okay. I make a YouTube announcer. And if you want to get fancy, you can add in those random unnecessary shouting sounds that they do at the beginning of the song right before the chorus. All you have to do is hit random things on your keyboard and shout it out loud. I see up the girl, so I'm gonna give it to her. Check, check, boop, boop. Alright, so everybody from Insta better be coming Whether here now. Whether it's a different language or it just sounds like it is, uh, there are still ways you can sound like your favorite artist. If you don't know the song, just keep quieter until the part that you do know comes up. <laughs> Okay, Ryan is ready. All right, awesome. Um, 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 I will, I will stop stalking his YouTube videos. I'm gonna tell him call whenever you're ready. Uh, this is a lot of pressure. This is a lot of pressure now. I didn't realize he was such a big YouTuber. Um, okay. Hello. Hello. Hi, Ryan. Hi, how are you? Good, you? Great. Uh, I will just capture your screen so I can get your video. Okay. Um. <clears throat> Give me one second. I'm sorry. I spend like the last 20 minutes looking up your YouTube videos because chat told oh. me to. Okay. Wow, your content's really good. I Thank you. honestly, I, I didn't know like chess.com just like kind of pulled me in, told me you were interested in Pog Champs. So wow. I was like, oh, this is cool. Somebody was interested in learning chess. I didn't realize you were such a big YouTuber. Well, um, even more impressive. <laughs> Uh, I just beat a level two computer, so that's a little more impressive to me, I think. <laughs> oh, okay, that's that's actually oh, that really was just good. Oh, like giggle. Okay, never mind. Um. Um. Okay. Yeah. Let me know whenever you have chess.com pulled up. Okay. And... Yeah, I'm switching it to. Hold on. Yeah. I mean, I think I think you're ready to. This you know... thing. Oh. <laughs> It was quite the struggle. That was my point. <laughs> well, I'm sure you're ready to beat Hikaru now. I'm sure you are. Uh, well, yeah, me too. Alright. Okay. Um, what's your chess.com? And I can show you some. Uh, my... Account name is just it's Ryan Higa. It's the same okay. thing. Alright, I'm going to add you. Um, oh, it's... 
I could not find oh, you. Oh, there's a there's a L in there too because it wasn't. Oh, uh, wait, sorry. Where is the L? I just send it to you. Yes, just send it to me. That that probably be easier. All right. I'm sorry, chat. Give me a second here. Um. Okay. Did you send it on Discord? Yep. Yep. Okay. Sorry. Just I just had to put that in because I just realized it wasn't giving me my name. Okay. No worries. Oh, I see the L now. Uh, all right. Um, I'm going to invite you to a live. I'm going to invite you to an analysis board. OK. okay. So how long have you been playing? How, how long have you been playing chess for? Uh, about 45 minutes. Oh, OK. Wow. No, we played a we played a couple other like three games. Oh, that's that's pretty good. Um, have you played chess like before at all, or is this like? Yeah, I played it um, like in middle school. Oh. So like a very long time ago. <laughs> um, well, I mean, it's it's always good to come back to games that you have played before because I think like chess is one of those that um, you can always come back to, right? It's it's always going yeah. to be there. Let's just put it this way. I just, despite playing in middle school, I just learned that you can switch places with the rook and king. Oh, you mean castling? Yeah, let's call it that. Okay, well that's good. Do you, so I'm gonna guess you know all the. Do you know all of the other rules in chess? You know, like the. I think I know all the basic movements. Um, other than that one, I just learned. Okay. Um, do you know en passant? No. All right. Well, actually. Uh, sorry. I I'm gonna invite you again. I think you have to. I I think you oh, have sorry. to accept. No, no worries, no worries. I just wasn't sure if if it worked. Um. Yes. Where where do I add you? Um. So you should be getting an invitation to an analysis board. Wait. Let me just. Oh, go to live chess. Like play. Uh, I have your stream open, so play, yeah, yes, live chess, okay. and you should be seeing, okay, uh, let me just invite you again, give me one second, I... don't accept that, I don't think the challenge oh. is correct, but, whoops, <laughs> oh. it's okay, you uh, can play it, oh, you, you... no, I don't, I don't, how do I leave, is oh. this not you, uh, yeah, this is me, but you can just go close the um, other game. Like, go to the other game. Like, wait, go all the way to the right of your of the window. No. All the way to the right. So the one where it says analysis board, go to the one above that one. Oh, okay, it's fine. They aborted it for you. You're cool. You're cool. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, okay, so this is analysis board. You're going to be able to see me make moves, right? Yes. Okay, awesome. All right, so you've learned chess 45 minutes ago. Well, I've, I, I, yeah, kind of. <laughs> all right, um, so I'll, first of all, I'll finish showing you, like, all the kind of rules in chess. And, and going from there, then we can, like, just sort of figure out what are the main ideas for, for starting out. Um, you right. know, beating a, a level two computer is really, really strong, so. That, really? that. Probably already got a natural talent already. <laughs> um, okay, so here, e5. Basically, an en passant is, you know how on the first move your opponent can make two moves, like two moves forward with their pawn? Yep. yep. Yeah. Okay, so when your opponent does this and you have a pawn, so look at this from White's point of view, right? Um, when your opponent does this and your opponent pushes the pawn two squares forward, and it's adjacent to your pawn, you can take them diagonally, like this. Whoa, okay, I did not know that. Yes. <laughs> it's it's pretty, pretty pog, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, if your opponent plays d6, how are you able to take this pawn? Right. 
Okay, so you just eat it, right? Yes, yeah. You can you can also make moves on this board too, I think. Uh, yes, there we go. Okay, yeah. So there's two ways you can take the pawn, um, basically, and this this is just called the ampassant. It also works here. For example, if your opponent plays f5, um, how are you going to take this one? Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. That's awesome. All right, so that's, I think that really finishes all of the rules we have to talk about in chess. Oh, do you know uh, Stalemate? No. Okay. Stalemate, uh, first of all, what's Checkmate? Checkmate? Mm -hmm. Just like you win, right? Yeah, you win. Okay, so Stalemate is when your opponent gets into a position um, where he is unable to move his king, but he's not in check. Oh, mm -hmm. I didn't even know that was a possibility. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of like these kind of obscure things in chess that you kind of have to know. Um, to Is that a win it. still or um, no? It's a draw. So um, let me clear the entire board. Wait a minute. Clear the entire board. I'll set up some pieces. So for example, here. Um, oh, wait, here. Let's do this. Show legal moves only. Okay, so in this position, if white's queen goes here, this is a draw. Oh. Because black's king has nowhere to go. Got it. Okay. Mm hmm. So that's called stalemate, and that's considered a draw. Okay. Mm hmm. Yeah, so. Um, and what would be white's move to checkmate in this position? How would white checkmate black? Uh, from where it currently is? Uh, um, yeah. So, white to move and checkmate. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. Okay. Okay. That's, that's really, really good. Okay, uh, so what kind of got you into, into learning chess? Uh, the first time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the first time. In middle school? Yeah. Um, it was... To me, I thought it was like the the easiest. We had to join a club, and I thought it was like like the easiest club to not have to go outside. <laughs> so that's I, that's why I joined chess club. Okay, that's a pretty good also, reason. Also, though, our chess teacher didn't know how to play chess either, really. So um, he we learned the basic rules, but it's not like he played chess, you know? So we really didn't learn anything. Uh... Wait a second. Wait, sorry, what? Yeah, we had a chess club thing. We, I went to a charter school in middle school, so we were forced to join clubs. And, uh, like, the only thing we learned was, like, what how, what the pieces do, not, like, strategy or, like, any of that stuff. Did he at least teach the piece movements correctly? Well, I mean, I didn't know about the castle thing, and I definitely didn't know about the on put on 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 the song. I didn't know about that either, so I learned like the basics. Okay, that's uh, or is that considered basics? Yeah, that, that's passons? yeah that that's uh well I mean ampasson is actually kind of kind of advanced honestly it's it's like one of the more yeah obscure... I think so too mm -hmm. yes okay <laughs> um, it's a French word don't worry about it it's a French word I I I think I got it now ampasson <laughs> okay um but yeah so basically did you know you can also castle on the queen side. Uh, castle on the queen side. Um, if everything's missing in between, right? Yes. So, for example, yeah. here, for example, you can castle on the king side. So this is basically. Yep. Do you see the arrows I draw? Uh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So this is the king side. Um, this side. Okay. And then this side, starting from the queen. This is the queen side. Got it. Mm hmm. So, castling on the king side means that you put your king onto g1. That's the castle. Um, mm -hmm. And if you do, if you want to castle on the queen side, so I mean, obviously, you'll have to clear out all the pieces from here. Um, I'm just making some really, really bad moves, but it's fine. So, mm -hmm. now basically, you can play king to c1. This is castling on the queen side. So, wherever you click on the board when mm -hmm. you do that, it just goes on the other side. Like, 
I thought they switched places. Um, you mean the king and the rook? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, okay, so basically, the way you remember how to castle is you have to pick up the king to drop it two squares to either the left or the right. Okay. Because if you move the rook first, you can see how that's not a castle. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So the way the way the developers made it is that you have to put your king. So you have to move the king one square to the left, another square to the left, and you drop it on C1. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So king to C1 or king to G1. Um, really, really important to, to remember to move the king there. Uh, because otherwise, if you move the rook, you'll realize that you can't get a take back, and you won't be able to castle. All right. Um, I think. Oh, okay. So one more thing that you kind of have to know is if you are trying to. Um, this is a. Uh, once again, so we know about stalemate now, right? Uh. Hello. Yep. yep, yep. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So we now we now know about stalemate. Um, there's there's another way you can draw in chess, which is uh, called repetition. So if you repeat the same like position three times, it can be anywhere throughout the entire game three times. That's considered a draw. Wait. Wait. What? So like you just you just uh, do the same thing as the other person. Well, so so it's like this is because they're repeating the position. I'm actually not sure if this this board is gonna let me do it, but right now this would be considered a draw because the position has been repeated three times. Wait, really? Yes, this is a rule in chess. What? Oh, so you could just troll then? Yes, but you would also need your opponent to troll with you. Ah. <laughs> I see. So I mean, sometimes it's the best for both. So you can like kind of think like if, if neither player feels like they want to play the position, they can both mm -hmm. like do it. But you do need a certain amount of agreement <laughs> with your opponent. I see. Okay. <laughs> so don't do that. Yes. So um, that, that's if you want to draw. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the, yeah, it needs to be the exact same position three times, and that's really I think I think those are like the basic rules that you kind of need to know. Um, yep. There are some other rules that I, I think are a lot less important. Um, basically, if you don't move, if you don't capture a piece for fifty moves, is also a draw. But once again, I don't really want to bring that up. And, okay. Mm -hmm. But what are the odd? Like, does that even happen? It has happened to me. It has. It, oh. it, it's but like it's very, very, very rare. Very yeah, rare. Okay. Yeah, it, it probably won't happen. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Do you do you know promotion? Nope. I don't think so. Oh my god! Your mind is gonna be blown. <laughs> Um, oh no no! They're saying pawn to the end of the board, and then you get something back, right? Yes, yeah. So um, once again, let me let me just clear the board so that we we just get we get something a lot easier. Okay. Oh, sorry, my bad. All right. Okay, so let me let me just get the pawn all the way down to the end of the board. All right. Uh. uh what piece do you think you want to promote into? Probably the queen, right? Yeah. So queen is usually the best piece for promotion because you will be able to checkmate your opponent with a queen. Um, the mm -hmm. only times when you don't... Okay, actually, I'm not going to go there. That's that's too much. It's too much. Uh, but yeah, you get you get the idea for promotion. And you can promote into anything you want, like a, a, apart from pawn and king. So you can promote into bishop, knight, rook, and queen. Um, the only thing you kind of have to be careful about sometimes when promoting is that if, if it's a stalemate, it doesn't happen very often, but um, mm -hmm. that would be a situation when you can consider, like, if you, once again, stalemating is when you make it so that your opponent has no moves to play, but they're not in check. Okay. So, I mean, well, why wouldn't you get your queen? Um. Okay, so this is like... Once again, just a very, very, very rare situation, right? But, uh -huh. uh, for example, if it was this position. 
And let's put a white rook here. If if white promotes into a queen right now, it's a draw because black's king can't go anywhere. Like these are all covered. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So that's also a very like unlikely thing to worry about, right? Yeah, very, very unlikely thing to worry about. Okay. Um, honestly, you don't need to stress it out about it. But I just wanted to point this out that it's something mm -hmm. that might happen. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. I think I think we've gone over all of the basic rules. Um, and and now we're going to go over how to play the opening. All right. So in chess, there are three different like it's literally end it's called the opening the middle game and the end game not the most creative names but um that's just I like how... it yeah yeah simple simple <laughs> exactly exactly um so basically you just use those kind of concepts and there's a very like specific set of ideas you want to use for each part of the game okay and Starting out, well, we have the opening. So this position is called, this will be the opening. And there's a lot of different openings. Um, like they each like set of moves have very specific names and there are ways to play them. So what I'm just gonna do is sort of, first of all, before I teach you any of that stuff, we just go over like the most common ideas for how to start out in chess. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. First, first rule, first rule that I'm gonna give you, and I think I think these are like so. I'm gonna give you three rules for the opening, and I think these are like the ones that you kind of want to commit to memory, like just like the rules of chess. So it's just like following the following the same pattern, mm -hmm. like I just memorize it. Yeah. So I mean, okay. I, I I don't think memorizing would be the best way to go about it. I think kind of like oh. understanding why, like it will like why this is so important or how it ties into the middle game part, that'll be the most important. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first rule will be to um, control the center. The center in chess is are these four squares. Okay. Yep, because they're in the center of the board. Once again, not very creative. I didn't come up with That's these. That's even better. <laughs> It's better than en passant. Yes. Yeah. En passant is one of those things that it's like, who came up with this name? Probably some yeah, 17th century. Yeah, they should just call it the pawn L or something, you know, like, because it makes like a, I don't know. <laughs> I like it. I like it. We're going to start calling it the pawn L. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so basically the, the, four, the four squares here is called the center. I mean, uh, people will argue that these squares are also like mildly important. But basically, the closer the squares are to the four in the middle, the more important they are. Mm -hmm. So a square okay. on A1 is usually not very important compared to a square um, on D4, D5, E5, or E4. If, if I say a square like E4, are you, do you understand where that is? Yeah. Okay. It takes me a little bit to find it. But yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll try to make it easier for you by just like highlighting it. Um, okay. So basically, for white on your first move, if I tell you to control the center, what's like the first thing that kind of comes to your mind? That what you just highlighted to go there. I okay. Think. Yeah. Exactly. E four is, is that like, not it. It is. It is exactly correct. Oh, okay. I, I'm not trying to like you know trick you or anything. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I just wanted I just, I just wanted to test you. Okay. I, I'm gonna stop asking those kind of questions actually um, no it's helpful you can ask whatever okay whatever you think no, I, I wasn't trying to trick you i genuinely wasn't trying to trick you i was just like i think you got understand it, it, but it. it's like it, like if i tell you you know you will just like you know copy it back but but if i ask maybe yeah um so if you play if you play e5 uh, sorry if black plays e5 he's basically got the same idea he's also mm -hmm. trying to control the center Okay. Mm -hmm. So the point of e4 is, first of all, it's sitting on a central square, right? So kind of automatically, it's controlling that square. Mm -hmm. And additionally, white is also controlling the d5 square. D5. Mm -hmm. so, yep. so that's like a two kind of in one sort of scenario because you are able to get both, right? Yep, yep. But 
but I mean, no one's really, it's even, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so. Yes, yes, it is. Um, but that's the part where it's gonna start mattering. Like the moment that your opponent plays something like h6, this is when mm -hmm. you push d4. I see. Because okay. now you have control of all four squares in the, in the center of the board. But if you do that, and mm -hmm. if, oh, you're saying if he doesn't move his, uh, his pawn up to match yours. Yeah. Okay, I got it. Yes. So if your opponent ever lets you get both pawns mm -hmm. into the center of the board, that you definitely want to do that. Got it. Yeah, because it's really, really important to control the center. And the reason for this is because if you get the center under control, it becomes a lot easier for you to like so um, it becomes a lot easier for you to move your bishops out, move your knights mm -hmm. out, because you have a lot of space. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you want space to make life easier for yourself so that, well, I mean, I kind of just like ran off there, but you kind of just have places, I mean, places to put your pieces. All right. Yeah. If you have any questions anytime or you don't understand anything, just let me know. I know I'm going really, really fast here. No, no, I think I'm, I think I'm falling for the most part. <laughs> the only reason why when, I don't know, I mean, I haven't played a lot, but when I do, I feel like when I do that and make space, mm -hmm. the thing that I always mess up with is like, I'm always looking to take things and then I don't realize other things are in danger, you know? Okay. Yeah, so that will be, um, we, we will cover that too. So that, that part is called tactics. Mm. Um, okay. It's basically like, wait, do you play League of Legends by any chance? No. Okay, um, I was going to make a League reference. I was just thinking I've about I've played Dota. Oh, but... okay. Yeah. Um, so it's like, it's like micro, your mechanics is like the tactics. And the macro play is like the strategy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So basically, so strategy, what I'm teaching you right now is strategy. This is stuff that will affect mm -hmm. your game for like a while. It's like, I, I, I played like a tiny bit of Dota and then switched over to League. So I don't even remember what the, what the monsters are, are called in Dota anymore. But, um, but yeah, like basically, <laughs> yeah, it's similar. You get the idea. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's like, you know, so, so basically it's the tactics part is what affects your move by move kind of decision. But in the long run, um, you kind of need to have like a general idea for what to do in the position as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it's not creeps. I was going to say Baron Nasher, but that's not what it's called in Dota. And I don't remember what it's called. Yeah, it's... I, have, I don't even know what you're referencing there. <laughs> okay. Um... Oh, it's Roshan. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. it's Roshan. Okay, Roshan. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> okay. I didn't know there was a league version of that. Oh, yeah, it's literally just the same name, but reversed. Nasher. Oh, Roshan. God, okay, I see, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe League did that. It's okay, it's okay, Riot. <laughs> it's fine. Um, so, yeah, so Black usually will want to play something like E5. And what would you play here as White? Um, I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> okay what i would normally do yeah yeah whatever you feel like doing i normally do this only because it's the only thing i've ever done that worked back in middle school okay okay we're going straight for the scholars mate i like it <laughs> it's the only thing that worked until people figured it out and then I, they just i would give up after like five moves <laughs> but it worked for a little while Okay, um, I, I, I think that, uh, I will have to, uh, I will have we to. We don't have to do that, I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to destroy your dreams of scholars mating your opponent, but. It's so much faster. <laughs> yes, I don't think that, you know, as, as we, as we play more games of chess, people are slowly mm -hmm. going to start realizing that this is. Shucks. Yeah, they, they won't do it. Um, okay. So instead of playing for tricks, I guess kind of in the long run, if like, you know, if, if we're trying to improve our gameplay as a whole, 
What's sort、mm-hmm. of necessary is to start playing towards the center as well, right? We still want to play towards these four squares. So this kind of brings、right. us to the second rule of the opening, which is to develop your pieces. Okay.、Mm-hmm. Um, Meaning. Yes. So pawns are are obviously these guys, right? Like these are the pawns. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Your pieces. So I mean, people will have say different things, but for me, pieces are, are, are these ones. These are your pieces. Okay.、Mm-hmm. So, some people just call it all under the umbrella term of piece, but I like to specify between pawns as the ones that you know get pushed, like one or two squares, and pieces are everything else, because I think that's、Got、really、it. important. Oh my God! Thank you so much, Hikaru, for the raid. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And once again, for、oh, everybody,、wow. sorry, for everybody in chat,、um, we're here doing having lessons with Ryan. Huge shout out to Ryan.、Um, if you guys haven't followed his channel already, follow his Twitch and also his YouTube. So huge shout out to Hikaru as well. Thank you so much for the huge raid. Welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome.、Um, yeah, so we're just here. Talking about how to play the start of the opening.、Um, now, once again, we've pushed one pawn up, and this is good enough. For, good enough for us for now. So, what you want to do is start developing your pieces, and the best move in this position is to play knight f three. Okay. So you play knight f three because you want to push basically. Um, you know, you might want to push d4 later. You might want to put your bishop out later. But the whole idea is that in the opening, there are three main rules you want to follow. You want to control the center, you want to develop your pieces, and then you want to castle. Oh, you want to do that? Mm-hmm. Those are those. I... So, so, like in that order, that's basically what you want to do every single opening. Okay. So, so the castling thing, you don't. I mean, I, maybe I've. I don't remember. Nobody actually has told me this, but I thought you don't want to have your king in like a little corner. Oh, you actually really, really want to get your king into、oh. into the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I might have made that up. I don't know. Okay. okay. Well, maybe it was your teacher who didn't know how to play chess that told you that.、It、could be. Could be. <laughs> um. Yeah, because I I think I think a, a critical part of of his chess knowledge might have been lacking over there.、Um, to be fair, I also may have forgot. Got or not been listening, so maybe he was good. I don't know. <laughs>、um, it's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. Well, we're here to to work on this now. So you actually、got、do、it. want your king into a corner because,、mm-hmm. so once again, kind of like with developing, right? If you get your king into a corner, your rook automatically comes out as well. Yep. So that's like developing as well. Okay.、Mm-hmm. So you definitely want to, you know, keep doing your development. So basically, black will probably play something like knight c six, and what you want to do is he like 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 he's here in this position.、Um, Wait, isn't know, that a draw? You said. Oh no! Only if you go back, but you're not gonna go back. Oh, I see. I see. We、okay. don't want to move our pieces twice in the in the opening because that's like a waste of time, right? Mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. you moved your piece out once. If you move it back, then you don't want to do that. You, you, you really nobody, nobody will do this. Nobody will do this. Don't worry.、Um, okay. Yeah. So, so don't worry about that.、Um, what you should be doing is developing another piece. So, what piece do you think you should develop here?、Mm. Well, the bishop.、Mm-hmm. For example,、uh, where would you put it? I don't know. <laughs> Here, I guess. Okay, that's a really good place to put it.、Uh, you know, you are once again controlling the center, right? Yep. You just—that's why I picked that spot. <laughs> not, not at all going for that pawn. <laughs>、yep. Not, not at all. Yep. <laughs> um, I, I, I know. I think, I think I have a pretty good idea of of, of what you're planning <laughs> here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I'm controlling the center. That's why. <laughs> okay, so so it's it's kind of like trying to scholars make your opponent.、Uh, except if if your opponent actually knows what he's doing, it'll be really really hard for you to do it.、Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I don't even know how to approach this because you have the ch- shot at like 
making your opponent blunder because he doesn't know what he's doing. But if your opponent actually knows what he's doing, it's a little bit risky to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, well, at this point, I'm not trying to do the queen thing. Mm -hmm. But like, I also didn't know where else to put the... Like, where would you have put the... Was that even the right piece to move? The bishop? Yeah. No, that was perfect. Bishop okay, C4 but... is an amazing move. <laughs> okay, so you would have put it there too. Yes, yes, I would have. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was 100% the correct spot. Um, okay. Yeah, no, don't worry, don't worry. You're, you're doing great, you're doing great. Um, but the idea here is that a lot of people play knight g5. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I kind of want you to actually learn this from like a both sort of perspective. Um, because... I mean, I'll show you the same, I'll show you some ideas for black as well, but all of these openings don't only just apply to white or only apply to black. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, very specifically, this opening is called the Italian, like in this position. Openings right. have names, right? Um, yep. Yeah, bishop c4 is the Italian, bishop b5 is its older brother, the Spanish. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'll try to remember that. <laughs> it's not super important. But what you really want to remember is that bishop c4 or bishop c G b5 are both really good moves. Okay. Yeah. And if you play bishop d3, for example, you don't want to put your bishop in front of a central pawn. And this also applies to black. Okay. Yeah. So just meaning a pawn that hasn't moved up yet? Um, or what does that mean? Um, so central pawns are very specifically just a D and E pawn. Oh, okay. Like literally in the center. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Yeah. So basically, that's what you want to do. Um, and if, for example, if you play knight c6, then you've got bishop c4. Your, if your opponent plays bishop d6, this is really, really bad for him because he's blocking his pawn from potentially coming up. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's kind of for yourself as black too. If you're ever playing the black side of this like exact same position, you just always remember you don't want to put your bishop here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Instead, what you really want to do is maybe put your bishop to c5 as black or put your knight to f6. Yeah, so basically, basically... What you really want to do here is either, like, as black, I mean, if, if black plays something like this, what you can do is to play, um, for example, d3. Or you can castle. Wait, why would you move the pawn up? I um, never know when to move the pawns. Okay, so you want to move the pawns. Um, you don't really want to move, like, these, these pawns. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But you move the central pawn, like the D pawn or the E pawn, in order to give yourself more space and to be able to control the center. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So actually what a lot of people play in this position is C3. Um, because the idea is that you can either prepare D4. I personally don't like that move. So what I play instead is if your opponent plays Knight F6, you play D3 in order to protect your E4 pawn. Mm-hmm. Yes, and this is very specifically the Italian. But once again, I, I I'm not here to like, like so I I don't want to like force lines on you in this in these kind of positions. I just want you to understand why to, you make the moves you do. Um, that's why I was suggesting a move like d3 because if your opponent plays knight f6, then your pawn on e4 is already protected. Kind of makes sense. Oh. Uh, wait, sorry. Did I lose you? Okay, I'm not sure what happened here. Uh-oh. Did I? That is so weird. Uh, hello, getting, hello. Sorry, did I, did I? What happened there? Wait, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, it's totally fine. Don't worry, don't worry. Um, I guess Discord does that sometimes. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Could I'm also sorry. Could be my internet. Uh, I, yeah, I think I missed whatever you said there, but if you don't mind just repeating. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. I heard what you said. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so you really do want to, like, protect your, your pieces and pawns that are in the center. Um, 
So kind of tying everything together, if you play a move like 9f3, what are you threatening to do next move? What am I threatening? Mm -hmm. Like currently? Because that's I'm supposed to move the bishop, right? Wait. Or you're saying, what am I, I mean, to eat the pawn or? Yeah, yeah, to eat the pawn. Yeah, but I'm supposed to move the bishop, right? Um, on move two, you're supposed to move the knight. Oh, yeah, 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 but the one after that. Mm -hmm. Wait, are you talking about? Okay. Wait, sorry, are we seeing the same position? Just... Oh, yeah, we are. Okay. Um, okay. Yep. So, basically, I, I just wanted to, to bring this up because um, every move that you make in the opening has, like, I an idea, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the idea behind 9f3 is to both develop, which I said, ha which has I have mentioned is very important because you want to control the center. Yep. It also brings your knight out, so it makes castling easier. But you're also threatening to eat the pawn. Okay. Yeah. So okay. when your opponent plays knight c6, he's also uh, protecting his own pawn. Yep. And this is very, very important. Because if you lose a pawn, or if you lose anything, right, that makes your game very difficult to play. Okay. Okay. Um, Alright, so we're going to go a little bit more into the opening, and then I'll start teaching you about, like, the micro of chess. Okay. Yeah, because I think I, think, I, think I need to explain that as well. So basically, bishop c4... Knight f6, um, oh, thank you so much, Nicola. Thank you, thank you. Uh, what you can do here is play something like, first of all, knight c3, because this protects your own pawn. Yep, didn't even see that, but yep, okay. Okay, we'll go over everything once again later, so, so to make <laughs> okay. sure. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry. Um, I know I'm putting out a lot of terms right now. I'm sorry about that. So just... No, you're good, you're good. Okay. I'm, I... I think I'm following. All right, just let me know at any time I'm going too fast or if you want me to slow down. Um, but yeah, basically knight c3, same idea as knight c6 by black. You develop so that you, first of all, you control the center. You're controlling these two squares with your knight. And yep. you're also defending your e4 pawn. Okay. Mm hmm So that's really, really, really important. Okay, and at some point if your opponent plays bishop c5, what you can do now is you can castle because you're ready to castle. You have your pieces in the center. These pieces are looking quite juice, quite nice. They're like just, uh -huh. you know, controlling controlling these four squares, right? That's always what you want to do. And once yep. once you've done that, once you've got the majority of your pieces out, you want to finish castling. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, if your opponent castles as well, you can just play d3. Your opponent might just decide to copy you, which is totally, totally fine. Um, you... Okay, so, so this move, I play h3 here because I don't want my opponent to play bishop g4. And I think this is a very good time to start transitioning into this concept of tactics. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, so... Uh, we we just covered the opening strategy kind of the opening strategy part. We'll we'll go we'll come back to this once we've talked a little bit about um, tactics. All right, so tactics is basic basically like one or two three moves that can help you get a piece or help you get that that a slight advantage. So right. for example here. Um, I'm going to teach you, so there's always three kinds of moves you want to look for on every single move that you play. So basically, um, all right, in this position, for example, what you want to look for is checks. Okay, this is this is the first first thing I'm um, teaching you in the toxic tactics, is to look for checks. Okay. So, give me white's check. Uh, move the white one. You mean? Uh, yeah. So so basically, a check is when you attack your opponent's king, right? Yeah. All right. Perfect. That's a check. 
And checks are kind of the moves you always want to look at on mm -hmm. every single move that you play um, because they're really, really forceful and they can give you the potential to win material. So this, this move is very specifically a fork because if your opponent, your opponent has to move his king because he's under check. So yep. he moves his king and what can you play now? Just eat this. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So bishop takes h2 and you win a free rook, right? So that's pretty good. So that's a fork. That's, that is a fork because you attack Got two it. pieces at once. And you eat it. And you eat it, exactly. Perfect, easy to remember. Okay. All right, I like it. Um, okay, so there's, <laughs> thanks Kimmy. And thank you, Pam. I'm sorry I'm missing everybody's notifications. Um, just really focus on the lesson. So thank you, everybody. Um, okay, so there's other kinds of forks. Um, well, I mean, not so much other kinds of forks. The idea is always there to be attacking two pieces at one time. But you can fork with basically every piece. Oh, that is not the right color. All right, we got a king here. And basically now, all right, let's 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 give white one more piece. Okay. What is white going to play now? Um, to fork? Mm hmm To fork. Uh, <laughs> is this safe? Yeah. Okay. Okay, easy. That was good. That nice. was awesome. Okay. Yeah, so that that's that's also a fork. And you know, I, I think you're starting to get the idea of, of how to fork. Honestly, mm -hmm. I think I think once you get the bishop and the Oh, we should also um I think I think I think you got these right down, but here. Here's another one. Okay. So once again, white to move. Uh just Yeah. Okay. So yep, yeah, those are the those are really the forks that we need to keep in mind. Okay. Um, okay, so we've got forks covered, and now the next thing we're going to look at is our pins. And a pin... Uh, wait a second. Okay, bishop here, rook here. Okay, so a pin is a little bit more difficult because it doesn't involve a direct check. Okay. So in this position... Um. I want you as white to find a move once again. Um, wait, it has yeah. to be a check move? No, no, no. It doesn't have to be. Oh, okay. Yeah, so basically now you, you win the bishop, right? So this is called a pin. Because if the bishop, so basically a pin involves any weaker piece in front of a stronger piece. Okay. Yes. So you've got the king here. You've got the bishop here, right? So the bishop is worth less than the king. I know this is not like a great analogy because the king doesn't actually do anything. And there's no like set mm -hmm, mm -hmm. amount worth like the king is worth. So, but basically the idea is that you've got a piece that's more important than the bishop. And now the bishop can't move away. So what does he do in that scenario? He has to try to move his king. And if you take his bishop, well, then it's good by bishop, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you move your king, though, then the bishop can just move away. But you won't do that. Mm -hmm. Because you can just go take the bishop. Got it. So it's a free piece. Um, but yeah, basically, that that's kind of like how, how you got to address this. Um, uh -huh. It's a pin. So some of the more common pins that you will see are maybe. Um, let me let me set up the whole board again. Um, some of the really common pins you might see is, for example, this one. In this position, this knight is pinned. Oh, I see it. Okay. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so there's a lot of different kinds of pins. Once again, the only piece that cannot pin is the knight. Oh, and... You I, wouldn't want to take the knight, right? You don't want to take the knight, no. 
That's not the point here. But oh, the, I see, I see. But it's just uncomfortable for your opponent. I see. Because okay. you can't move away the knight. Got it. Yes. Um, this becomes really important later on. So sort of like in this position, if, if your opponent just goes for this and you don't pay attention, um, your opponent can play something like knight d4 and you can't take on d4. Well, you shouldn't because the bishop can take your queen. Okay. Right. So that's the part where pins can get annoying. Mm -hmm. And this is like a real kind of like a real game example of where you would see a pin. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, do you know about the values of each piece? Like in a general sense? Um, like a pawn is worth like one point. Like a number? Yeah. Oh, no, I do not. Okay. Um, so th this will this will actually really really help because then if you put like a numerical value to each piece, then you know which ones, which exchanges are good and which ex exchanges are bad. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the pawn is worth one point, the starting value. Um, yep. The knight and the bishop are both worth three points. Okay. Yeah. Um, the queen is worth, um, I'm going to go with, with ten. Are you making these points up? No, I'm not. I'm not. So the queen can be able to be oh. worth nine. Okay, so we'll go with nine. Queen is worth nine. Rook is worth four and a half. Okay. Because otherwise, no, oh, I, I was just trying to escape the rook being worth 0.5, but it's fine. If the rook is worth four and a half. Okay. <laughs> I'm not making it up. <laughs> no, I was just wondering. I was like, okay. That, no, 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 no. This, this, this is like, this is, I mean, people will, will argue with me no matter what I say. So, uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, you know, we're just here trying to, trying to keep it. Yeah. Chat, that guys. <laughs> chat. Come on. Can we stop, please? <laughs> um, yeah. So knight, knight is worth three. Bishop is worth three. Pawn's worth one. Rook is 4.5. Queen is worth nine. <laughs> so basically the idea is that if you swap off a bishop for a knight, that is an okay trade. Okay, we're just gonna go with rook with five. Okay. Chat, chat is like rook is rook is five. So rook is five. Sure, queen sure, is queen sure. is nine. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so basically, if you swap off, <laughs> if you swap off your knight for your opponent's bishop, then that's okay for you. That's that's totally fine. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. If you swap off your bishop for your opponent's bishop, once again, three for three, totally mm -hmm. cool. Um, if you swap off your rook for your opponent's rook, also totally cool. Five for five. Nothing wrong with that. But if you're going to give your rook for your opponent's knight, then that's not cool. Because five is worth more than three. <laughs> that one that one's that i can follow that just okay numbers <laughs> yeah so so we just we just have to like give the numbers so like you know i mean i'm sure you can that remember does help it, but yeah. yeah so it, it really helps you when you're like capturing things to realize is this capture good for me mm -hmm. yeah five is more than three five is worth more than three so that's not worth it got it mm-hmm um, but basically, you know, giving using a pawn to take on your opponent's piece is the most worth, mm -hmm. because that is a one 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 like point, right? But you're getting three in return or something. Would you say? Because here, mm -hmm. here my theory out. Uh, when you're playing someone better and you know they're better, yeah, to just try and get rid of as much as you can. Like if their queen's there, to just take their queen, so that. <laughs> have less to work with that is pretty much the same mm -hmm. because you have less to work with yeah I, I do think that's a pretty good idea honestly um it, it is a really good idea but of course you have to consider it this way even though your opponent is better there's still a chance for them to go wrong but if they don't have uh -huh. if you don't have any pieces yourself to you know take his pieces or you have no more pieces to go checkmate your opponent then you also don't have the chances to win anymore i see mm-hmm but at the end of the day, it, it's, it's very much up to your personal preference. Okay. Yeah. So the biggest danger of, of like going down that I want to just exchange everything sort of like mindset is your opponent might mm -hmm. end up being better than you in the middle game or the end game. Ah. Uh. Yeah. 
So that might be an issue. But once again, it it really does depend on what you're comfortable with. You're you're not really playing. I I don't want you to like you know start being afraid of your opponents or anything because once again we're here we're here to learn. Don't worry too much about the results. Honestly, um, of course winning is nice. Of course of course not losing is really nice, but. But if we're in any game, if you're if we're trying to improve, I think it's better to play the game objectively. Mm -hmm. At least for now. At least for now, um, we we can worry about you know the results and everything later. But for now, we want to just work on sort of like you know getting into a decent position and then and then playing the best game we can. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> yes. So basically, um, you know, if you feel like an exchange is is it's okay then go for it but um yeah do play the position and not so much your opponent like don't worry too much about your opponent's rating don't worry too much about it it's more about my own rating really <laughs> it's it's more about like <laughs> not want to lose the rating. issue i have is i get too excited when i see something that i can take mm -hmm. and then i don't realize because there's so many other things to look at that i just kind of forget about okay and then i'm like oh oh yeah, I forgot about that so that's why i'm like okay let's like get rid of as many things as possible mm -hmm. so we have less to look at <laughs> all right that's pretty good that's pretty good okay so once again um that's why i like we went a bit over the opening and that's why now i'm mm -hmm. taking it back to tactics because um you'll see how this all kind of ties into the game so once again we looked at the fork and the pin right yes okay there there are a lot of tactics in chess and Going over them will take forever, but I just wanted to give you like some of the main ideas that there are so you can start seeing these. Um, so basically, this one is going to be... Okay, so, so this one is going to be a little bit more interesting. Okay, so it's this position. Um, give me one second. Let me put this queen... Uh, let me put it, where should I put it? Okay, let me put it here. It's white to move. How would and you, what, sorry. No, I'll just say, what are we supposed to do? Uh, how would you win black's queen? Um, just... <laughs> that yes perfect okay this is called the fossil that's not a pin uh oh no or, or a fork no Actually, what is what yeah it's called the fossil <laughs> okay yeah so this is the part where chess gets confusing because there's like 50 of these different things uh -huh, and you kind of uh -huh. have to know the idea and then you kind of have to know the name as well Okay. Yeah, so it's I like the reverse pin really. So you know, <laughs> it's it's the it's called the discovered attack actually. Um, basically, you're discovering something. So you're discovering the king, and then you're gonna go take the queen yeah. next move. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Because the the king has to move. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm so that's that's kind of what you have to do. Like when the king moves, then you can go take the queen, right? Yep. I like the name fossil. It was actually made by Foosley. So, oh really? Yeah, huge shout out to Foosley for for naming it. It's a lot. It's a lot more creative than Discovered Attack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Discovered Attack, got it. Yeah, it is. It is. Why the fossil though? I don't understand. Uh, What's the... You might have to ask Foosley. <laughs> hmm. Was it XQC? Okay, I don't even know. It was XQC. Okay, <laughs> my bad, chat. My bad. My bad. <laughs> um. Okay. Well, I mean, it's a fossil because you discover it. That, that, got that, it. That, okay, that's I what... got it. I see the relevance. <laughs> okay, but it's a discovered attack. <laughs> um, yeah. So basically, I mean, you you check the king, and then you go take mm -hmm, the queen. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And yeah, so that's that's like three three ideas that are very very common. Um, what else is there? So on every single move that you make, base. Oh, sorry. Uh, on every single move that you make, once again, I want you to be looking for the checks, the captures, and the threats. The checks, captures, threats. Mm hmm In that order. Okay. Yeah. Checks, capture, threats. Because you can see how in the last few tactics we've Wait, done... Wait, what's capture? Is that just taking someone's yeah. thing? Okay. That's just taking someone's someone's piece. Um, basically, what I want to do is, you know, just kind of give you this position. What? So we'll go back to the beginning. And mm -hmm. if at any given time, 
your opponent is like for example um okay wait i, I don't know why why i just went into the the spanish like that <laughs> I just, my, my, Spanish scenario. Yeah, no, my my, my so I oh. only play one opening, and this is this uh -huh. is the only opening I play. So sometimes I just auto move the pieces because it's like it's the it. only thing I do. Um, but basically, the idea is that I we are going over the bishop c4 line because it's a lot less theoretical and it makes a lot more sense. Um, so That's basically, the Italian. Yeah, this is the Italian. Okay. If your opponent plays something like knight a5, what would you do? As white. Um, I would. <laughs> Did we go over this already? I don't know. No, I, no, we didn't. We didn't. We didn't. Uh, we didn't. <laughs> so that's why. Just that, maybe. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, that's okay. It's not the optimal move, but at least okay. you're defending your piece, and that's what I wanted you to see. Okay. So what's the optimal move? <laughs> um, the optimal move in this position would be to, for example, move your bishop, you know, just back, for example. Because your, okay. your opponent put his knight over here, and this has created a weakness, sorry. This has created a weakness on e5. Oh. Okay. Mm-hmm. So he has to actually go back. And now that your bishop's already here, you can just castle. Oh, uh, okay. So the reason <laughs> the reason why I moved that pawn is because I thought we didn't want to clog the center. Right. Yeah. Okay. We, we don't want to clog. Okay. So chat for, for everybody who, who, who really wants to take the pawn. Um, this is like going to be such a pain for me to like analyze because then this stuff happens and then you you got this you got this like double attack i don't even know what just happened but... and then you know you just gotta deal with this thing in the center it's totally okay to do it it's actually a really good move but once again i want to make this simple as simple as i can to people okay like like we're trying to keep it simple here <laughs> um because otherwise it, it's it's gonna be really complicated and also like yes let yes as you guys have mentioned if it, even if you don't take and you know there's there's like there's just so much stuff here guys d6 is not winning either because you've got knight takes f7 but then you have to play after queen h4 you gotta go queen e2 okay yeah, guys idiots don't worry about it chat don't worry uh -huh. about it <laughs> So, um, you definitely, definitely don't want to do that. Um, I mean, right now, if your opponent plays this, as far as I'm concerned, just move your bishop back. Just try to not, not, lo not lose your pieces. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, but that was really good. You instantly notice your opponent is attacking your bishop. And that's but the best to run back. Mm -hmm. And the reason for this is actually because if you play d3, your opponent is going to play knight takes c4, and then you're going to get two pawns on the same line. Oh, that does happen to me a lot. And, okay, so have you felt comfortable with those kinds of positions? Um, normally, I just kind of leave them alone and work with the other things because okay. I don't really know when to use the pawns. Okay, so basically if you get double pawns, you, you kind of like have like one less pawn. Because okay. now they're on the same file. Right. So you don't really like this pawn structure. Mm -hmm. What you want instead is to keep your pawns like adjacent to each other. You don't want pawns like on the same line as each other. Okay, that's a good rule to remember. <laughs> yes, because this way you have more pawns to work with, right? Yes. Yeah, so, so you don't really want to do that. So if you're going to play something like this, then you, just, you can just move your bishop back. And... What I will, the, the most important part was just noticing that your bishop was actually under attack. Um, because, you know, a lot of people kind of don't realize that their pieces are under attack and kind of just do whatever, but I'm, I'm glad mm -hmm. that you're noticing immediately. So okay, that's... I'm not going to lie, though. I feel like if I was in this scenario and you weren't here, the <laughs> other thing I would have done, other not even knowing that rule, would be like taking the knight and doing that. And that what happens there... I mean, it's a really, really good move, actually. This is a really amazing move. 
The only issue is that once your opponent, once you get in these positions, like what happens if your opponent plays mm -hmm. D6? What are you going to do? Um, <laughs> wait a second. Wait, couldn't you go here? Oh, no, wait, you can't. Can you go here? Yeah, you can. Okay, um, you're attacking my queen, so I have to move my queen. Oh, did we just screw ourselves? No, you're totally fine. You're totally, oh. totally fine. But the position gets a little bit complicated. Mm -hmm. See, I, I, I don't know what you mean by that because, like, for me, I'm like, oh, I think we're okay, right? Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, I mean, you're. I don't you're, know. You you're tell fine. me. You're fine. You're <laughs> fine. Yeah. No. 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 This is this is the, this is this is totally okay. If, if you're down to play these kinds of positions, I'm I'm all the more happier for you. I'm all the more happier for you. These positions. I would rather you tell me why I shouldn't be doing this. Okay, I'm just afraid. Like, just that... show me how I'm gonna lose. <laughs> I mean, you're not losing here, but the thing is, so um, this is not like a principled opening position, and I just didn't want to jump into something so aggressive this quickly because otherwise we mm. might be losing a lot of the ideas that um will will make up eighty percent of your other games just doing i see doing these 20 but once again i'm really happy to just like you know show you show you um how to play these kinds of positions so let's say you get into a position like this and you have so first of all what is the material balance on the board like who is up material who's down material what what, what do you think well i took his rook mm -hmm. wait what did i lose i i should be winning in numbers right yes you should be so do you want to, you can just like literally do a little count quickly. <laughs> um, you'll have to do this at some point during your games hey, too. So yeah, you can just do a little mental math. In real life, you can just look over what's off the board. <laughs> they don't have one of those things, like a picture. That's not the way to do it. What if your opponent hides the piece? That's shady. That's just like, <laughs> not a, that's like bad sportsmanship. It is. I am all. It is. But yeah, you can do a quick count. So like you have a rook for a rook, mm -hmm, knight mm -hmm. for knight, bishop for bishop, um, knight for knight, queen for queen, and a rook for his bishop. Yes. So you do, you are up, up a little two. bit. Yeah, you're up a little bit. Um, but you're saying this is a bad position. No, right? no, this position like... is good. Once again, this position is good. It's just complicated okay. to play. Which is fine. Got it. I I should probably not do complicated then. Um, but it's okay. Once we get let, like I mean, now that we're here already, I might as well as, like kind of give you this idea of how to play complicated positions. Okay. Mhm. Mm so basically, in these situations, when your opponent has like a knight and a queen kind of developed, and you don't have anything moved right like your your four pieces here just chilling on the back rank mm -hmm, mm -hmm. your knight is kind of like on a8 not doing a whole lot um this is a good time to start getting you know first of all your king to safety um because your king is on e1 mm -hmm. and your opponent's next move will probably be something like queen takes e4 okay so if i play castle short castle here for white and y your opponent plays queen takes e4 what can you do here as white what can I do or what? Uh... Well, yeah, so what should you do here as white? I mean, my <laughs> my gut move is to go here still. Uh, sorry, uh... go, go. Oh, okay. So this is the part where I want you to start looking for uh, threats. So before before you make this move, before uh -huh. you before you make move like queen f3 what what are the three things you always want to look at in every position something capture threat wait uh, was that it uh, no something the some what's the something come on chat speed a little faster <laughs> check check okay. capture <laughs> yeah there we go so you want to look for <laughs> checks captures and threats okay yep 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 also oh, am i looking for their checks or my checks if it's your move so ideally you want to look for both but this is like all right this is this is like we're going exponentially in in like hard hardness okay. um, so let, let's just focus on your own checks and captures and threats right now okay mm -hmm. um 
Okay. Can I even check them? Um. Well, okay. So the check in this position is not the best move, but it's just good just practice. Just out. Yeah, it's good practice, right? To always look for it. So that's your one check. Okay. Do you have any captures here? Any captures? Uh. Okay. No. I feel like I yes, that is correct. There are no captures okay. here. <laughs> yep. Nope. Okay. So. So um, you've looked at the check. You've identified there are no captures. Now you come mm -hmm. to the third one. Is there a threat here for you? A threat is when you go attack something. Oh, I thought the threat was if they attack me. That's also a threat. But when it's your move, so, oh, okay. so basically when it's your um, move, you should be thinking, does my opponent have any checks, captures, or threats on the next move. But once again, this is like thinking two moves in advance, like three, two, three moves in advance. So it becomes a little bit more complicated. Mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. now, what I really want to focus on is just you identifying on this move what you should do. So it's good practice, honestly, okay. after each move your opponent makes to see like, do, can my opponent capture anything next move? Can my, can my opponent check me anywhere next move? But well, in this case... He, he could only check me if he eats the pawn mm -hmm. at G2. Mm-hmm. Right? And yeah. then, but then I can just eat him, right? Right. So that's not a good capture by him. Yeah. But doing, going over this thought process is really important because what if you had, like, for example, um, you know, your, like, what if your piece was out on, if you had a knight on d4 and your opponent just played that, then you would have to go save your knight because he no, could wait, have hold captured on, hold next. On. <laughs> wait. Okay. If knight was on d4, if, then so, you would, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. If hypothetically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we don't have to worry too much about hypotheticals, but th but that's kind of like how you need to address. That, that's the reason for always thinking about checks, captures, and threats. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this position, um, once again, you've identified there's only one check, which doesn't do a whole lot. There are no captures. So the next thing mm -hmm. you want to do is think about a threat. What's a threat here for white? A threat would mm -hmm. be. Oh, um. Wait. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay, do you know? Do you remember what a pin is? Yes, I think. All right, it's when you have a less important piece in front of a more important piece. Okay, so this is going to be the weird part because I know I kind of like said that the king is the most important piece, even though it's not worth really anything. But can you find a way to create a pin in this position? From the from black side? From white's point of view. You're looking at this oh. from, because it's white's point. Sorry, it's it's you're playing white in this in this game, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So as white, what would you play here? Are you saying mm -hmm. a threat for me to threaten them? Yeah. Oh, I was looking for like how they're going to threaten me. Okay. Yeah, I'm uh, sorry. I'm sorry. Um, no, no. So so if it's your move, what I'm more interested in you finding is the best move for yourself. Um, I guess I could go here. Uh, oh, wait. No, we don't want to do that. Let's take it back. My hand was still <laughs> on it. My hand was still on it. Okay, okay. Uh, I mean, you saw it immediately once you moved it. And that's the important part. You hold saw on, it immediately. Uh, <laughs> okay, it's this so that one, was good. This one, this one, right? Yeah, it's that one. There we go. That's what I meant. There My hand go. was still on it. That was awesome. That's awesome. You saw it. You saw it. So that's a pin. This is the pin. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so the queen can't move away because then you can take the king. So he, he legally cannot move the queen away. So he just has to accept his queen going to be... Um, you know, taken, for example, yes. like this. All right, Sorry. that was good. So that's just kind of the, like the thought process you have to go through on every single move. I know oh it's going to be like a lot because uh -huh. every single move, it's like, oh my God, I have to think about all of these kind of things. Um, but at the end of the day, like this is how you're going to improve your thought process for chess the most. Is there a timer? in this tournament yes like how long do you have on your turn normally um so it's not a per move per move thing but i would say on average you have maybe 30 seconds to make your move oh. um okay 
Yeah. That sounds pretty tough. Yes, but I mean, you know, um, it's the last one was in a 10 plus 5. So 10 minutes for the entire game plus 5 seconds for each move kind of format. Mm -hmm. um, but if, you know, if you are playing, have you played any games with times already? With um, what? With, with like a clock. Mm. Oh, I have, mean, you have not most games, right? Uh, and Wait, not, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Um, so have you used a clock? No, no, I don't think so. Uh oh. Okay, so that's I, I was just pulling up your chess.com profile. I, I didn't see any um clock like games, so, so I was just wondering. Okay, that is totally, totally fine. Totally fine. So what we're gonna do is we will play a game between each other. I'll guide you through like your entire thought process and everything. Okay. So we get kind of like, you know, I can only show you so much at the end of the day, you will mm -hmm. have to be mm -hmm. able to like, you know, put these into a game. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm not going to, we're not going to use clocks or anything like that to start off in, but mm -hmm. I will be, you can play white and you can kind of use the ideas that we have, um, that we just looked over to sort of play your game. All right. All right. So you go. You go. Uh, you can make moves on this board too. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I will play e5. Okay. Perfect. Uh, once again, why do you play this move? <laughs> I will be quizzing you a little uh, too. <laughs> as a threat. As a threat to the pawn and to take the space on the left of the pawn. Uh, D four because it's in the center. -ish. Okay, so you're 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 doing this. Okay, that's really good. Yeah. Okay. And you like to do <laughs> not the Italian, but the other one. I that's what I like. But I forgot the name. Don't worry. You, but you you should do the Italian. You should do the Italian. Okay, so yeah. that's that's um that. Yes, it is. Um, and it's just a very natural move for you to move your bishop out, and then you're mm -hmm. able to castle quickly. Okay, so I play bishop c5. Mm. <laughs> Wait, this is the one that I'm supposed to... <laughs> Am I supposed to, like, do the rook, the castle thing, or move the bishop back? Um, okay, so so why do we have to move it back? Because I don't feel like are we in danger? Right. Why did you have to move the bishop back last time? Do you remember that? No, but I don't see it this time. Okay, so the reason you only had to do it last time was because your bishop was under attack. Mm. But if you're if nobody is threatening to take your bishop, like my knight's not threatening to take your bishop, yeah, right? Yeah. You can do basically whatever you want. Okay. So how would you? What would you? So just using our general. Uh, opening principles. Do you, first of all, just repeat the what? What are the three general opening principles? Um, uh, <laughs> capturing. Oh. And threats, and and checks. Check, capture, threat. Um, those 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 are the uh uh, oh, wait, uh that's micro. Not it. Those are the micro principles. Okay, then it is <laughs> the forks and stuff. That is still the micro principle. Oh, okay. Okay. Wait, wait. What are you asking exactly? <laughs> All right. So you remember it? You remember the micro part, but the macro part was um, mm, the. Macro, macro. So, yeah. So the macro part is the strategy part, right? So that's um, going for mm -hmm, mm -hmm. controlling the center. Oh, yep. That was a thing. Development. Uh huh. Developing just means getting your pieces out. Controlling the center is like my word for getting your pawns out. Okay. Um, so, you know, so that was for... Op so first of all, you want to control the center, right? With mm -hmm. E4, that's what you did. You control the center. And you develop your pieces. That's what you did with Knight F3, Bishop C4. Yep. And now the third rule of the opening is to castle so once again you don't need to castle mm -hmm. immediately but as long as you're doing it in like a reasonable amount of time starting from 
or like a reasonable amount of time and you just don't just yeah. leave your king in the center for the rest of the game that's fine by me so right now then because mm -hmm. nothing's threatened right yes okay yeah so right now would be for example a perfect time to do it all right perfect um i will develop as well um Okay. I forgot. No, 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 it's fine. Just What wait. happens next? Okay, you don't, don't don't try to remember it. Don't try to remember okay, it. Think about okay. it this way. Just repeat once again. What are the three opening principles? Opening principles were the ones we just talked about. So, it is we're trying to control the center, right? Mm -hmm. And uh we are trying to move out things in the middle so that the little pieces in the back can come out. Mhm. Mm yes. And we already did the rook castling thing. Mm -hmm. So, what we want to do is move the middle, I think. But so I'm being threatened by the knight. Okay. Um, I can't check you, I think. Okay, that's good. Yeah, you, you, you don't really have um, any good cap checks or capture. That's good. That's always important. I don't know. I would... I. Does this work? Yes! Okay. That is perfect. There we go. There we go. Yeah, see, you got this. You got this. Okay. Don't stress too much about like trying to remember the moves. It's a lot more mm -hmm. important to just understand why you make the moves you do because your opponent won't be repeating this exact same opening mm -hmm. every time, mm -hmm. right? So what right. if your opponent switches something up and then you then then there's nothing to remember. You you got to play the position by yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's when using opening principles is so important because it's like Okay, well, at this point, I have to be like, okay, well, I want to move my queen. You know, no, sorry, not my queen. I, I need to, like, open up the center. I need to use my pawns. I need to develop my pieces, and then I need to castle. Okay. And that's applicable to all openings. So, in general, like, mm -hmm. is when do you... Like the other, I know the middle pawns are more important, but like, when do you decide to like, like maybe you just don't, I can like, if I don't know where to move, when do you just move the pawns? Oh, uh, when do you just move the pawns? Okay, so apart from moving the center pawns, yep. The, it, it becomes, this is like a really high advanced lesson actually now. So uh -oh. usually you want to move your pieces out. After you've moved the two center pawns, you usually just want to move pieces out until you finish moving all your pieces, and then you worry about your pawns again. Okay. So you still have, like, you know, one, two, three, four, yeah. five pieces to move, right? So uh -huh. you basically still have, like, five more moves until you have to worry about moving your pawns. All right. Yeah. Okay. So you moved a pawn. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to castle. Okay. How would you continue here? Um. God, just knowing I have 30 seconds normally is making this so much more stressful. No, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry. Take your, take your time. And, and honestly, what you really, really should be doing is just <sighs> trying to, like, understand why you make the moves you do rather mm -hmm. than a stress about, like, specific moves. Okay. Yeah. So just use those opening principles and think about what would be something you want to do here. <laughs> um. <laughs> Every move you make have to like be like you already know it's going to be like a check or a capture or something like that. Um, no, those are only the moves that you want to look at in case your opponent can, like, take one of your pieces or in case you can take one of your opponent's pieces. So the mm -hmm. moment you think about it and you're like, so in this position, the first thing you should be looking at is my opponent just castle. Do I have any checks? Do I have any captures? Do I have any threats? And this is like a really quick way to see that bishop takes f7, just loses the bishop. No point mm -hmm. in giving mm -hmm. that check. Taking on e5 just gives away the knight. No point in making that move. And um, you don't have any, like, real threats in this position, like where you threaten to take your opponent's queen or you threaten to take your opponent's bishops. 
Okay. Right. So once those kind of moves are out of the way, then you go back to thinking like, okay, openings. Oh, okay. Yeah. So just forget about that stuff. Yeah, it's like it's I like you're saying. it's like micro and macro play, right? Like when you're in your lane, you don't really think about like, oh, let's go do Roshan right now. Like you're not thinking that far advanced. You're just like, okay, well, I, I need to farm like the creeps. I need to like not get hit by my opponent. Mm -hmm. That's what you're thinking about in like at that point. But Got then it. once like you're kind of like chilling, like you know, <laughs> you're like your opponent's not not like autoing you. You're you're not being attacked. You're not finding them. Then 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 that's when you can start thinking, oh. Okay, should we group now? Should we like you know do that kind of mm -hmm, stuff? Mm -hmm. so, okay, it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I just, I mean, I don't even know why, but I feel like I'm just gonna move this there. Okay, that's perfect. That's exactly what we're here for. We just developed another oh. piece. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think I think you just you should just be more confident in yourself. Honestly, okay. I, I think you're doing really really well. I know this is your first lesson. Is like you know. Yep. <laughs> um, but I, I just want like I just hope that chess is enjoyable and it's not stressful for you because there's no point in doing something that's stressful. No, well, no, it's still enjoyable, but it is stressful. Okay, okay. Well, uh, <laughs> let's 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 up the let's lower the stress level. Don't worry too much about it. You're doing amazing, honestly. Um, so basically. Now I'm going to play a pawn move. Okay, so this pawn move, h6, is mm -hmm. very, very specifically to stop you from playing bishop g5. That's the only reason? That's the only reason. I see. And the reason for this is because, um, so once again, if you play bishop g5 here, it's actually not that annoying for black because I mm -hmm. will probably play h6. And you can you don't want to take this knight because this is so usually bishops are better than knights but usually they're both three points right yes they're both three points but and you want bishops but you want bishops because bishops can travel further okay and um also because this is considered like a fairly open position so open positions are usually openings that start with e4 and e5 Wait, sorry, repeat that last thing again? Okay, so there's there's like... It's an open position. So there's three kinds of positions in chess. Open, semi-closed. Oh, there's four. Open, semi-open, semi-closed, and closed. Very creative, I know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very creative. So open positions are when the bishops can go a lot of diagonals. Like this, right now. The bishops can go around the board. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so a closed position would be, for example, if my pawn was on d4 like my my pawn on d7 was on d4 that would be a closed position okay yeah this is really advanced so i don't want i don't want to like go too far into it but i just wanted to explain why if your opponent attacks your bishop and you're ever thinking about should i take the knight or should i just move it that's how i want you to address okay so you just move it because it's better yeah you you move it in this case because it's better and you mm -hmm. also what is this called a fossil ling uh. trap. Nope, it's a pin. Yes! I read chat. I cheated. I'm sorry. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. Chat, chat, chat's got your back. <laughs> chat's got your back. Yeah. Okay, um, it's a pin. Yes, it but is I the pin. Is it a pin, though? Because I can't take that without getting eaten, right? Yeah, so the whole, like the horse doesn't need to the knight doesn't need to move, right? <laughs> yeah, the knight does not need to move. But the idea of a pin isn't to necessarily capture it. It's just to maintain that it's annoying for me. Like I will admit oh, to you, okay, I, okay. this is annoying because I can't move my knight away. Because what will you do yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah, just take the queen. Yes, exactly. So okay. you really do not want to um, like like I mean like this pin is just this pin is just very very annoying. Um, so basically you just want to, you can, you don't need to pin every single time you see it, but uh -huh. if you think like it's a good idea and just kind of like trust your basic instincts, if you can move your bishop there, it doesn't get taken. This would be just be a very natural place to develop your bishop as well. Okay. Like you don't need to go out of your way to go pin somebody, but if mm -hmm. it's like on your way of, you know, developing your bishop, then you can do it. Okay. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Perfect. Um, so that's, I don't know if you remember, but that's the whole reason why after knight c3 I'm playing h6. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. <laughs> to prevent that from happening. Yeah, to so... prevent that from happening. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah okay um, so i play h6 now now what do you think you should do <laughs> uh i i really don't know Okay. Um, have you finished development yet? Deve oh, getting the things out from the back? Yes. Yes, getting the things out from the back. Yes. Okay. Um, no. Mm -hmm. But, like, there's no place to get that out unless if I move the pawns, but I'm not supposed to move the pawns yet, right? Um, yeah, or do I just so... move it through the center? I mean, you can. You definitely can. Okay. So that would be an uh, idea, for example. Okay. So like, I guess just this. That is actually like an amazing move. That's actually like the best move here. Wow. Oh. Okay. okay. That's really, really good. Okay. Why though? Like, <laughs> I don't know why. Okay. Well, That's you're making move. these moves without even knowing why. Just imagine if you actually knew, if you knew why. You'd be, that, oh. that, that was just amazing. Um, okay. So the reason for this move, well, my reason for it, people will argue with me once again, but my reason for playing rookie one is because if I play bishop e6, e3 right now, where I want to put mm -hmm, this bishop mm -hmm. to trade off this one, because this bishop's kind of annoying, right? Like it, it's, it's yep. aimed at our king. He will take and create these double pawns. Yep. Okay, so what? So this is the part where I'm gonna say double pawns can be bad, but these double pawns are very specifically not that bad because they're in the center. Okay. And you also get a half open file. So in this case, both bishop e3 and rook e1 are both really, really good moves. It's based on personal preference, which okay. one you like more. And this is a large part of chess. When it comes to the middle game, it starts becoming about personal preference mm -hmm. but if hikaru okay. is in the chat and wants to correct me please do let me know <laughs> please do let me know um okay so basically if rookie one happens what do you do if i play knight g4 um I guess, um, you know, you just ask for help. <laughs> no, I honestly don't know. Like, uh, okay. What are the, okay. So we have to go through the things. Mm -hmm. There's no checks I can do. Right. Safely. Uh, and then after that, it was captures. Um, yeah, captures. But, okay, so this is the moment when you need to start thinking about what your opponent wants to do next move. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be smart to take the pawns because I could just eat it. <laughs> oh no, I couldn't eat it. Oh, I see. Wait. Okay. I think I think uh -huh. you're I think you're getting it. Um. Well, I'm looking at the the knight taking. Uh. Shoot. I'm I'm confused. <laughs> no, no. I think I think you're getting it. Um. What do I do? Yeah, if it was black to move, that, what would go black be playing? <laughs> um, he's gonna move the bishop to f two, right? That's perfect. That... That's exactly what black well, wants for to perfect, do. Well, perfect for right. So <laughs> that's what he wants um... to do. Okay, that was good. So that's kind of like how you have to think about on each move your opponent makes is like where does he want to, you know. Capture. Mm -hmm. What does mm -hmm. he want to check next move, or where does he want to capture next move? Right, right. Yes. So to mm -hmm. prevent that. <laughs> yes. Uh, shoot. Okay. Is it dumb to to do this? Well. No, it's not at all. 
That's totally, totally fine. Even though two, it can be eaten in two different ways? Yeah, that's okay. Um, how many ways are you defending your bishop right now? Uh, rook and pawn? Mm-hmm. Rook and pawn, exactly. Yep. And how many does your opponent have right now? Yep, just those two. Just those two. So if yep. he takes first, that means he now only oh, has one, and then you have two. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if, so the way you, you can, like, do these exchanges, I mean, apart from, like, going, you know, here, and then here, can my opponent do that? What you can do is, is look also, like, I have two defenders. My mm -hmm, opponent has mm -hmm. two attackers. Okay. So I will be able to get that last capture. Got it. Got yeah. it, got it. Okay. So you can he, you can totally do this, and this is this is totally fine for you. Um, okay, that was awesome. That was awesome. So knight g four is is usually not a very good move. Um, instead, what I would do as black is probably mm -hmm. play. I would play d six. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep quizzing mm -hmm. you. <laughs> okay. Sure. <laughs> Wait, right? Like right now? Or? Yeah, so no, no, just just do whatever whatever you feel like is correct. Oh, okay, okay, for, okay. Um, uh, yep. <laughs> I mean... <sighs> I have to get this out at some point. Mm-hmm. Perfect. That was really, really good. Okay. Okay. So this is one of those positions where it's like, once again, I'm gonna say it's 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 a lot about personal preference, kind of how you play it. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. so Something that I am always scared about is getting pinned. Oh. Mm-hmm. And I am usually just of the general opinion, like how I played h6 as black. Once again, bishop e3 is really, really good. But after mm -hmm. bishop g4, what I am threatening is going to be knight d4. So if you just play a move like this, for example, and I play knight d4, and you don't mm -hmm. take back my knight, and you just, you know, you, you make a move like a3, I will take on f3 and force you to double your pawns. I see. And this is, once again, it's not the end of the world, but it's uncomfortable. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, oops, I'm sorry. So it's just good practice um, to not let your opponent... Get that bishop to g4. Okay, so you're mm -hmm. saying to move um, that one up. Yeah, oh, to the move one the on pawn the side. Up. I see. Okay, mm -hmm. so at that point, see, because I was trying to go down the list, and I'm like, okay, I'm trying to move out these things in the back, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but in that case, that's the reason why. Yeah, that's cause... the reason why. But once again, even if you do it, it's not the end of the world. Got it. Okay. It's it's not the end of the world. You're not losing mm -hmm. pieces. And at this moment in time, what I'm mostly focused about is you not losing pieces. Um, yep. And I think I will make you play play a game today, just like against the pool. <laughs> I like I, I, I know okay. it's gonna be okay. it's gonna be a lot of pressure and, and you know, first of all, you have a lot of courage for, for doing all of this on stream as well because it's like you know, <laughs> it's a lot of people. <laughs> right? Yep. But once again, like it's it, it's totally, totally like you're learning super fast and that's the important part. Um, these middle games are just like um the it, it becomes largely personal choice honestly it's like how do you want to play these positions as mm -hmm. a player but what i usually like to do is is really and and i'll be teaching this from from my playing style obviously because um this is how i play these positions so i don't like getting pinned i've had bad experiences it's not the end of the world if you do not a, not a big deal at all um but if you okay. remember to play h3 and stop your opponent from coming to g4 you yep. notice how i was only threatening bishop g4 once i moved my pawn up yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So basically, you push your pawn 
I mean, sorry, I pushed my pawn in order to act my bishop. When you push d3, mm -hmm. I did h6 because I don't want your bishop going to g5. So Got it. Okay. this is a very, very, very similar. Um, this, is, this is basically the idea. You, you just want your bishop going, being able to go to g4. Okay. Um, I mean, as, as black. And as white, if, you, if I told you I want to play bishop g4, something that you can sort of instinctually do is to play h3 to stop this. All right. Yeah. Okay. So that's that idea. All right. So this is one of those positions where, you know, as black, um, I've mostly finished developing. I'm going to play, like you, I'm going to play rook to e8. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um... Uh No worries. No worries. Take your time. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's perfect now. Um, I don't. I'm no longer threatening Bishop G4. Bishop yep. E3 is a t is a good developing move. All right. And I take. So you said to not do it with the pawn, right? Because yeah. then they'll be lined up. Also, it's not bad because it's in the middle. Right, but so so the logic oh, what's for better? that. So the logic for that would be if your rook was still on F1. Then if you take, it makes sense to take back with this pawn because your rook would still have this half open file. Okay. Yeah. So, so I should use the rook. Yeah. So in this position, if you had played bishop take bishop e3 immediately, and mm -hmm. I took, and you played f takes e3, you can see how this can be a really good open file for half open file for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Because okay. your rook gets a little bit of activity. But once you've committed yeah. to playing, sorry. Oh, I got the wrong line. But once you've committed to putting your rook on e1, if you now take with the f pawn, you'll have to move your rook back to get control of this. I see. Okay. So you don't want to do that because it would be a waste of one move. Do you think you're you're handling everything okay? Handling what? Like like, like the concepts. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, the hardest part is remembering the names. Okay, if you have any like name suggestions that are easier, uh, feel free to suggest them at any <laughs> well, time. Well, I mean, also the order of like events, you know, like what you should be looking for. Mm -hmm. I feel like I know we're not supposed to worry about time, but I'm trying to remember like, okay, so I look for the check first mm -hmm. and then like what things you're supposed to look for first, you know? Right. Okay, but remember, um, this is your first day. <laughs> True. This is your first day. I think you're stressing out a lot because I've been playing chess for 17 years. <laughs> Okay, true. <laughs> so yeah, you're doing amazing. Like honestly, like you're you're already like expert level. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Now everything else you say goes out the door because we know that's not true. <laughs> I mean, I mean, honestly, I think I think you're like learning every all these concepts really solid. Like I went from teaching you the pieces to already going over like middle game ideas in the span of an hour. Mm hmm. So. Okay. That is, that is very, very, very good. Um, but yeah, so the idea, I mean, in this position, once you start getting into the middle game, it just gets exponentially harder. Um, <laughs> so, oh, I, it, it's just, I think it's a lot. I think, I think, I think I'm going to start making you, you play a game. So you kind of get at least the opening part down. And um, wow. of course, I'll be helping you. And for anybody who says that, that that's cheating, I have asked chess.com to refund the rating. Okay, guys? <laughs> 
Okay. Oh, there's so, actual ratings. Yeah, there are ratings. So you'll get you'll get your like placement Ew. games. I see. Okay. Mhm. Mm um, you won't be playing me. You'll be playing against somebody in the pool. So don't worry about that. Um, if so, so once again, before before we go into a game, I just want to like run over sort of um, mm -hmm. the final ideas in these kinds of positions. So okay. I will just make the moves because I think it makes more sense this way. So once you've developed all of your pieces, like all of your pieces have kind of like moved round once, mm -hmm. you finally move your queen. Oh, that's like the last thing you want to do? Yeah, that's the last thing you want to do. You don't want to move your queen out too early because there's not a lot of good places mm -hmm. for it to go in the opening. But and like if, right now, mm -hmm. she's kind of trapped, right? She is kind of trapped. But the idea of moving the queen isn't to use it to attack something right now. It's to get your other rook out. Oh, I see. Okay. Right, because your rook has been sitting on a1. And an idea yep. for white in this position would be to, for example, put your rook onto e1 and then push d4. So Wait, say that again? You want to put your rook onto e1. Yep. And then push d4. Okay. Yeah. So connecting the rooks, uh, I, I like to call them, or Foosley calls them rook bros, so that's what I call them now. Um, they're okay. the rook bros, and they like to see each other. Got it. Yeah, they like to, okay. they like to be seeing each other because they work really well together. <laughs> mm -hmm. And in this position, for example, I will connect mine, and then you can play something like rookie one. And basically when the rooks get connected, this is what I call the middle game. Okay. So you literally learned like the entire opening part of chess in the span of an hour and a half. Oh, that's just the opening. Yeah, that I was just we the were, opening. like halfway through the middle. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wish I could say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, good to know. Yeah, um, we we are now officially in the middle game part. I don't Got even know it. if it's official, but I have decided that connecting the rooks makes it official. So usually you should be around mm -hmm. in the middle game. You should have your rooks connected by move 11 or 12. And we are on... Move 12. Eight. Oh, what? Oh. 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 Where does it say that? How do you know that? Um, okay, so look at the analysis board. Wait, let me just pull up your... Um, yeah, analysis board, right? So do you see mm -hmm. the move that's currently highlighted? Yes. Rook A1. Okay. That that part's that is, highlighted. Um... <laughs> so that is move. Got it. You, okay. you look at the yeah, you look at the number right before it. Um it's move 12. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Um all right. So I think we're ready for your first game. Sure. All right. Is it so this is timed, right? This will be timed and rated. Yikes. Okay. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. But before we go into that, <laughs> Just tell me once again, what are the three opening rules? Oh, God. Um, three opening rules are, first of all, <laughs> first of all, the first rule is to, okay, this is not the check thing. It's <laughs> the, it's to move the things. Okay, hold on. Move the things from the back out. That's that, one of them. That is one of them. Yes, you're correct. Oh, center control. Yes. Center control, <laughs> moving the things out from the behind, and then um, castling. Yes. Okay. I yep. just dropped it into your Discord I'm just, just to make it a little easier. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to just write everything to you. Post-it notes. Yes, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to write everything to you. So developing pieces <laughs> is pushing the pieces out from, from the back, uh, and right. then castling. And then the what are the other three things mm -hmm. that you need to look mm -hmm. for microplay? For microplay, we mm -hmm. need to look for checks, captures, and something that rhymes with checks. Checks, captures. Almost there. Threats. Yes, there we go. Yep. Okay, I just dropped it in your Discord, so if you ever forget, okay. just like look at that, look at that. Yep. yep. Um, all right, awesome, awesome. Okay, so let's get you into a game. Um, go to the play part, and this is how also like a rundown of how chess.com works. So you have to go to play, mm -hmm. which is right next to the analysis board. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, go all the way to the right of your screen. Mm -hmm. uh, wait, that's the left, right? 
Okay, play. Yeah, there we go. And then goes to like 10. Like, like you see where the 10 is? Click on the little drop down menu. Yep. Uh, okay. Ooh, yes. Okay, and then click on, um, click on the 15 plus 10. So the 15, whatever the line thing is called, and 10. Yep. Okay, and then okay. click on play. And you might get black, in which case will be a little bit troublesome, but it will be it will be a good practice. I'll just give you a lesson in the middle of your okay. game. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So, I'm not, but. Okay. Uh, wait. Let me give me one second. I just need to follow your game. Well, uh, I think we started. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So you just have to make your first move. All right. Okay. Use use the I have teaching. A minute. You have 14 minutes, 15 minutes. Oh, they they add up. Oh wait, this is not the same. Um, this is this is. Uh, oh, okay. Everything's changed. Everything's changed. <laughs> not like this. Not like this. Um. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Wait. Uh, give me one second. Okay. This is good. There we go. Okay. Um. Uh, all right. He just took your pawn. What are you gonna do? There we go. This is good. <laughs> Don't worry, you're doing fine. You're doing fine. I know this is this is the danger of when okay, he's attacking oh. your knight. Um hmm. Um Yikes. <laughs> Wait, so this time is all adding up, huh? Yeah, so uh, you can, don't don't worry too much about the time right now. Don't worry about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just focus on making a move. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's perfect. You're defending your knight. Alright. Decided to attack your knight. You're so much faster. Don't worry about it. You're doing great. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> uh, what is he, what does he want to play next move? To take my, eat, eat my knight. Right. I think. Okay. So how are you going to save your knight? Just run. Yeah. That's, that's totally fine. That's perfect. You just run. What happens when we run out of time? Do we uh, lose? Yeah, you lose the game. Oh, yeah. okay. Well. Uh, oh shoot. Okay, perfect. You're developing. It cannot be better. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't... Am I supposed to see something? Because you're giggling an awful lot over there. No, 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 no. I'm just saying... <laughs> I, I'm just thinking, like, I think... I, trust yourself here. Trust yourself here. Um... Don't yes, that's I perfect. Myself. Honestly, that was perfect. <laughs> that's perfect. Trust yourself a little more. I'm gonna give a less. Okay. <laughs> uh what is happening right now? Um He's just moving his queen. But okay. on every single queen move, all you have to do is think about what does he want to do and then Yep. But I don't get it. Oh, I see. Okay. I see what you're doing. Wait, do I see? I don't trust myself. You should. You should trust yourself. <laughs> what does he want to play? You can tell me. Uh, he wants to get the rook. Yes. I think eventually. Yeah, he so does. So I was going to move it to the right. Okay. Okay. This is awesome. I think they know I'm slow. So like the plan is to stall the time runs out. Oh, that's different. That okay. is different. Shoot. What do I do now? Um... Okay, perfect. Wow. That was a good move. <sighs> good stuff. Okay. Mm. What was this here? Shoot. Just take your time. Nope. Ah. <sighs> Stress. Hmm, don't worry, don't worry. Just take your time. <laughs> take your time. Uh, I have to get this stuff out. Okay. Once again, really good move. 
Okay. Just controlling the center, solid play. This is something. Mm -hmm. This is called something. <laughs> um, wait, no, but then he can just move the pawn up. Are you seeing this real time? Because <laughs> I am. I am. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. This was annoying. You said so. I'm just gonna try it. Okay. Wow. This is amazing. You're like, yeah, perfect. That's a development, and you're also pinning uh -huh. his pinning his knight. Could not be better. It could not be okay. a better move. But he could just move the pawn up. And then I run away. Right? Yeah, but but that's okay, right? If you say so, then yes. <laughs> well, I'm telling you. you tell me. <laughs> as long as long as you're not oh, losing okay. a piece, it's totally fine. All right, so I move back because we've been through this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's perfect. Yeah, as long as you just don't lose your piece. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. It was the perfect time to castle. Okay. Wait a second. What just happened? Um. Um. He just moved his knight. Yeah. So he did that. So this can get. This could eat this though. But why? Oh, because if I move this and the queen. I'm confused. <laughs> okay, what are you thinking he would do next move? I'm thinking take bishop for bishop. Okay. That's perfectly good. And then I'll... Okay. Mm -hmm. But I have to leave this pawn here. Because then he could eat that. I'm... I think... Um, I'm not sure which no. pawn you're seeing, but... Oh, the uh, B2. Oh. I have to leave that there, right? But the B2... Nothing's attacking your B2 pawn. Oh, but I mean, like, the, won't the queen eat A3? But... Wait, what move are you trying to play here? Oh, um, no, I was going to move the B2 up one. To protect the bishop. Oh, okay. Yes, that is true. Then your then your opponent's queen can take your pawn. That is true. Right. Okay. Right. But your other move, your other idea was was totally fine. Taking the bishop. Mhm. Mm okay. That was totally good. I forgot the order of operations. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. This is already this is almost the middle game. So this is the part where okay. we didn't that we didn't even go into this. You played the opening okay. perfectly. Could not have asked for more. Um, yeah. That is a good move. And this was a move that okay. Um, I'm not gonna say anything. You keep playing. If I move the queen, then we have rook burrows, right? Um Yes, but right now, what is your opponent? He's trying to eat to... my bishop. And? And? <laughs> um, and or pawn? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, but so we, so my gut is saying move the rook up, but like then the rooks won't be in line. Right. right? Okay. So. Is that bad? That would not be optimal. What's another mm -hmm. way you can defend your pawn? To move the bishop down? That true, but, but then and you... And that goes away from the thing we're trying to do. Yes, exactly. Okay. So, do you need to protect your pawn by, like, having it there? Or, like, do you need to, like, physically protect your pawn? Or can you just, like, literally move your pawn away from being attacked? I, I could move it. Mm -hmm. and is that the right move? Um, yeah. I mean, I'm kind of giving you the move here, but once again, this is why I'm refunding the points to him when mm -hmm, we win this mm -hmm. game. But you don't have to necessarily, like, literally protect something. You can, yeah. quite, like, quite literally just, like, move it if it's being attacked, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, you're giving your opponent pressure. That's why he's thinking. <laughs> he's confused. Oh. <laughs> you're playing really well. He has no idea. I, I don't think he knows how much pressure he's giving me. <laughs> look, at, look how many more minutes he has than me. 
Right, but but that's totally natural. I mean, I'm just gonna scout this guy real quick, but uh, mm. he's played a lot more games than you have. Ah, we'll just put it that way. He's played 900 games. Oh my wow. god. No, he's played. Uh, no, no, no. Sorry, my bad. He's played like 30 games. My bad. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All right. You got this. Okay. Connected the Rick Bros. Perfect. Yep. I'm still not sure why that's good, but I know that that's good. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, the very general idea is right now you're attacking his knight, which mm -hmm. is good. Mm -hmm. He might not see that you can capture it. And also, your Rook Bros are connected, which means now you can put them on like E1 and D1, which like you aim it at your opponent's king, basically. Mm, I see. Mm hmm. Okay, so he saw that, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in this position, you have a tactic that can mm -hmm. win your opponent's knight. Okay. I do? <laughs> yeah. So it's, um... it's all part of looking for... I told you last time that you were, you, you were attacking his knight, right? Yes. And you want to you want to capture that knight. Okay. So the queen is currently protecting it. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm but what's a move you can play that will like kick away his queen quite literally? Kick away his queen. Yeah, from defending uh, the knight. One of the one of the pawns. Mhm. Mm okay. So which pawn move? Not that chat. Do the one. Okay. Perfect. Wow. Um. You did myself very. At some point, though, I guess I just gotta go real quick, and then because I think he knows I have no time. Yeah, I mean that that's fine. That's fine. Even if you lose this game, don't worry too much about it. You played an amazing game, and <laughs> I would like you know I would make you play even slower chess, but but that would mm -hmm. that would draw out for a really long time. Okay. Okay. Got this. Yeah, good. Yeah, he, he's just figuring out how to not lose his knight. And I'm sorry I'm quiet. Mm -hmm. I just want to give you the time to think about this game. No, you're good. Um, at some point, I'm, I'm probably going to just start moving things because like, there's no time. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that will probably have to happen. But until then, um, it's all about... Is this far into the middle or just starting the middle yeah, we've, game? Yeah, we've like halfway through the middle game already. Okay. Yeah. So so you're doing amazing. Like I didn't even teach in the middle game, but you're doing great. Okay. I do have a mute button, but it's I think it's like also just kind of weird to be talking. I like I muted myself right now, but he, he like sometimes we just talk and then I have to like cut myself out. So, uh, but I just want to say that like Ryan is it's actually playing really really well, and for everybody here, I hope you guys are learning a little bit too. I do hope you guys are learning a little bit too. And I, I just want to give him like the peace of mind to think about this because during a game, he won't be having me to talk. He doesn't probably, he probably doesn't want, you don't want somebody interrupting your thoughts, which is just why I'm like staying quiet. So yeah, sometimes muting, muting is okay, but sometimes just like being quiet, I feel like it's also okay. It gives chat some time to think as well. And as you guys can tell, he's just kind of in thought. All right, good stuff, good stuff. <laughs> For everybody who doesn't think in the chat, this is a good time to start thinking chat. I mean, I'm glad you guys are enjoying the lesson. It, I know it's really, really basic, but once again, Ryan has pretty much never played chess before. And I absolutely love teaching people. I absolutely love teaching people. I love teaching everybody. So I just think, I, I just want people to really enjoy the game and learn, and I love seeing people improve so quickly. I love people say like look at him like he didn't know what empassong was now look at him all right is he asking me stuff wait did huh? i like sorry did you were you talking to me no oh no. okay my chat was just, I'm just like me then. thinking out loud okay <laughs> okay good stuff and one way to save time is on every move that your opponent's mm -hmm. spending time on you kind of think about what you want to play next as well Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So that's really important. Like right now when he's thinking, I know I'm talking, so it makes mm -hmm. it a little harder, but this is a good time to also think, what if my opponent does knight takes e3? What would I capture with? What if he moves his mm -hmm. bishop? What mm -hmm. would I play? I think he's muting himself to also talk to his stream. <laughs> so it works out for both of us. But once again, he's, he's doing amazing. And he's just like, this, rook, this rookie one move is so pog. Aiming at the king. Dude, this guy is like going to be 2600 in three days. Rook, rook one is really good because when the bishop moves away, you can attack the pawn. All right, that's called castling long. You have a really okay. good move here. Oh, mm -hmm. I do, do I? Yeah. I'm going to give you a hint. Okay. How do you threaten checkmate? How do I threaten checkmate mm -hmm. I don't the queen I don't know um okay so if you could put your queen anywhere right now mm -hmm. where was the one square it would could be and checkmating black and checkmate yeah so like if imagine if you could just place your queen somewhere yeah where would it be where you could checkmate black on the back left I yes mean, uh eight yeah eight eight okay so that's an idea so um there's really like two this one move that's a lot better than the other one but either you could you know you could use a rook or a queen to go threaten that yeah which one would you prefer is there a right answer or um no <laughs> i want i want you to actually make this choice for yourself i think oh. I, th I think both are fine yeah both okay, then be fine. probably the i think okay that's that was the better one <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the better one. That was that was amazing. I like honestly, I, why am I even here? <laughs> I mean, like, I think for the tournament, is it fair to just you just tell me what to do and then <laughs> you should do it. How it works? Yeah, I, mean, I think we should just do hand and brain for the rest of the tournament. <laughs> um, yeah. So rook is better here because um, I, the previous move rookie one was good, but the other rook would be better. Okay. Okay. So now so, you go again. I could check him. <laughs> mm-hmm. But But I shouldn't, you say. Mm, I, I don't wanna s I do not there's no my butt isn't for you shouldn't. My butt is for what is he gonna play after. Go here. Oh, I could go closer. Wait a second. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. I mean he only has one I move after a gate. What's here? Oh, okay, it's fine. It's fine. His king just goes to c7. So something you want to do if you're trying to check my opponent is uh -huh. cut off the king before he can go there. So now you can see his king oh. ran away. But don't worry. But I can't just eat the, the pawn? Wait, what is what he's going to play next move? Huh? So what is your opponent going to play next move? If I... um. Oh, I see what you're saying. Because then he could eat the queen. Um, wait, hold on. I think he's looking at this. Uh, we don't have time. Don't worry, don't worry. Don't don't stress, don't stress. Okay, so right now, uh -huh. your rook is under attack, right? Yes. But okay. I was going to play eat with the queen, but then he could just move his queen, and then, I don't know. If I if I eat the eat the pawn, doesn't he have to move? Well, he's got a bishop defending the pawn from f8. Oh, true. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I think I messed up. <laughs> no, you're you're doing absolutely fine. You're doing absolutely fine. Okay. I know the time pressure is is really serious here, but don't stress it. Don't stress it. Just just make logical moves. That's perfect. That's an amazing move. Okay. Good, good. The moment you see a move doesn't work, that's when you stop uh -huh, thinking uh -huh. about it and you immediately go for Whoops. something else. No, that's fine. It's fine. It's fine. What can you take back with? Good. Okay, you've got one move here. Yeah. That's like winning Wait. next move. Um. Okay. Can I just go? Wait a second. No, he can't go. 
I go here. What? I'm, can I just... Goes here. Nope, he can eat that. <sighs> um... <laughs> No, don't worry, don't worry. Okay, so your rook's under attack. It is true. Mm hmm Okay, <laughs> but his king is very close to being checkmated. Should I, should I move my other rook then? Um, before you go there, what, what is the one move if, once again, if you could put your queen anywhere on this board, where mm -hmm, would it be, mm -hmm. where could it go that it checkmates your opponent? Um... Uh, I don't know. I guess, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Don't know. The queen, you're going to checkmate him if your queen was on a5. Uh-huh. But right. it can't, I can't get there this turn, right? Right. But you can threaten it. Right? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to eat my rook, though, right? Unless if I go, oh, he can't. Oh. You know what? I'm just going to do it because we don't got time. Exactly! That was perfect! That was perfect! Okay. That was the move I wanted you to play. <laughs> I thought he was going to eat my rook, and I didn't realize that he can't. Right, right. Okay, so this is just part of, you know, the time pressure. Like, you would have seen yep. this if we had 15 minutes on the clock, but mm -hmm. now with that same pressure, you know, you're, yep, you're getting it. Yeah, a lot of pressure. It. Okay. Okay, this is, that, that, was, that was the best move. It has to go. Um, can't go there. Tori, chat. Where are we funding the points? <laughs> okay, this is a lot of pressure for him. So I hope everybody's giving his channel a follow, and also supporting him because it's a lot of pressure to play on stream. So guys, do give him all the support. Do give Ryan all the support. <laughs> so your opponent is most likely to play either King C seven. Or c takes d4 on his next move. King c7, mm -hmm. or or what's the other one? C takes d4. Oh, he plays king 7. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, you no longer have checkmate, but you still have really good moves. <laughs> that's that's a perfectly good move. Okay. If he actually played b6 there, I don't even think it was that good. I think the king can just run. So what he did was perfectly fine. Chat, it was not checkmate. It wasn't checkmate. If you play this, he goes here, king here, the queen just goes here. There's nothing. There's no checkmate. There's absolutely nothing there, okay? Don't worry about it. Don't worry. So if your opponent plays king c8, what would your next move be? Yeah, I guess move the uh, rook up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that would be checkmate, right? But he's probably going to go down, right? Yeah, he's going to go king, king to d6. To the right? Yeah. So what would you play there? Um... Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> um, okay. Um, play whatever you feel like is natural. Uh, natural. Yeah. What w What would you do here? <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know. I just um. Okay, that's perfect. Okay. Yeah. I'm just looking at our timer. <laughs> it's okay. Don't don't stress out. Don't stress out. That was the best move. Okay, he only has one move, right? So now he's gonna play King Seven. Just automatically think about what he's going to do after king e7. All right. Oh, no. He could take it. Oh, um, whoops. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's fine. I'm just trying to make moves because I'm running out of time. Right. Okay. So when, you, when you're running out of time, you just start taking his material. So, for example, oh. rook takes b7 uh, was a free pawn and also a pin. And that's uh, why. Rook takes, wait, Rook takes what? B7. Oh, that. Mm -hmm. Whoops. You get the pin again. I see. Yeah, that's why um, you always want to learn the three tactics ideas. Those are the most common ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. If he takes back with the pawn, what, would you, what are you going to play? Uh, I don't know. 
<laughs> don't, we, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. You're stressing too much about it because of the time. Let's actually see if I can. Okay, you took with the queen. All right. Mm hmm Okay, good. Still good stuff. All right. Uh-oh. What's he trying to play? Um, I don't know. Okay, he wants to take your rook. Yeah. So, what should you do? Okay, that's an idea. That's a good idea. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Here, I want you to protect your queen. Okay, that's good. All right, fork. Good. Um. Okay. Wait. Yeah, okay. This is so intense, chat. Oh. All right. Uh oh. Can you take back? Yeah, you can. All right, now do you remember what I told you about promotion? Yes. Okay. Kinda. All right, so you want to get pawn to the eighth. Uh oh. No worries. Okay. Palm back down. I have no time. No, this is great. You're doing great. Okay. How do you get the rook out of there? Uh. Yes! Okay. This is good. This is good. Wait, did we get more? Did, they, did we get more time? Yeah, you get 10 seconds per move. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right, perfect. Yes, that was good. Good stuff. All right. Okay, really good. Guys, the game is just so intense. Like, I don't want to ruin this moment. I, I, just, I just don't want to ruin this moment, you know? Like, there's just so much going on. And, and he doesn't have a lot of time, and I'm like, if, if, I, if I say too much, I'm going to ruin everything. So, um, I think he knows. I don't know if he knows how to checkmate. I haven't had time to teach it, but I think he's going to get an idea. He's going to get an idea of how to checkmate. He's actually smurfing so hard right now. He just needs to push that pawn down. He's going for it. What is he, happening right now? <laughs> your opponent's just moving the king back and forth because he has nothing better to do. But you got this. Okay, this is this is so intense. Oh my god, he knows it. He knows. It. Is he gonna play it? Is he gonna play it? Okay, good. Oh wait, I thought that was the end. <laughs> no. He, okay, well it's almost the end. Almost the end. All right. Does he know checkmate? Because I haven't taught him that yet. But this will be the next big lesson, I guess, to teach him what checkmate is. Do you remember what happens if you push a pawn to the bottom? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Good. Good. I, I really don't even need to say anything. <laughs> uh. Okay. Now you will be figuring out how to checkmate your opponent. Oh, okay. your opponent just Whoa. resigned. Oh, but I wanted to see how. Okay, <laughs> we'll go over how to checkmate. We'll go over how to checkmate. But look okay. at that. Look at that. Congratulations on your first game. That was so stressful. <gasps> it is nice to know you can get time back, though. <laughs> Yes, I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely, so the, the time format I recommend you to play if you're practicing your own is the 15 mm -hmm. plus 10. Okay. When it comes to Pog Champs, it'll be 10 plus 5. So it'll be a little faster, but until oh we gosh. get there, 15 plus 10 is your go-to. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, here, let me uh, analyze put this into analysis board and I'll invite you. Um, give me one second. That was really, really good 
by the way. Like, I mean, I, I know I helped you, but you found the majority of the moves just on your own. That was that was impressive. Okay. I think I would have made some big errors if you weren't <laughs> talking me through it. I mean, no, no. Like, I, I think the whole point is that, you know, I'm here to help you. I'm not here to just, like, leave you leave you be. Yeah, yeah. So that was, that was awesome. Um, okay, I see you're in the game. All right. Um... Wait, what is this? Do you see? Yeah, do you see it? Okay, e4, d5. All right, so you were white, right? Um, is there an echo oh. for you? No. There's no echo for me. Are you hearing me on an echo? Oh. I'm hearing me and you. Maybe you have the stream open? Is it open? Oh, it was open. Oh, okay. <laughs> it must have just... Did it fail earlier? Uh, yeah, your stream was down for a little bit, but you had 30 oh, seconds. Oh, that's probably why. So I didn't want to, like... Paused. Yeah. Um, I, I, I didn't want to, like, you know, make it... <laughs> make <laughs> But more stress on you. Yeah, <laughs> I would have really um, just ignored it because there was no time left. <laughs> so, yeah, I, 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 didn't, I didn't bring it up, but we're back now. You, you came back, like, okay. like, as you were winning, so I think your stream saw that. All right, all right. Um, so, yeah, so Knight C3... D takes e4, knight takes e4, queen d5. You played this amazing. Um, this is called the Scandinavian. Okay. And what what he's doing? Yeah, what he's doing is the Scandinavian. So when your opponent plays okay. d5, you play e takes d5, usually, because this brings his queen out. Because what you played, knight c3, while it's not bad, it make, it can let your opponent go um, d4. Oh, I see. Okay. Right, and then you have to move your knight somewhere, and then he plays e5, and now you can see how he has already two pawns in the center, and you only have one. So what was the, so what was the right play there? Because instead of bringing out the knight, mm -hmm. um, just taking it. Yeah, just taking the pawn because this brings his queen out, uh -huh. right? Yeah. And then you play. But. Yeah. Isn't that good for him? No, it's not good for him because bringing the queen out. So I mentioned how you don't really want to move the queen out too early. Yeah. In the game, because what happens is you get to play knight to c3. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. And then the queen has to move. Yeah. And if the queen moves, then you basically got a free move of development. I see. Yeah. Okay. So if d takes e4. Knight takes e4, queen d5, d3, f5, knight c3. You played this really well. You just developed all of your pieces out. Um, you know, this was just so natural. Rook v1, once again, amazing move. Your opponent was hitting that, so you defended the pawn. e6, a3, okay. d4, knight c6, bishop b5, a6, bishop a4, bishop d7, castle, knight a5. Okay, so this was the time where you had, like, a little bit of doubt. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. So, uh, you, you went over you went over how you wanted to play B3, right? I think so. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you went over how you wanted to play B3 because you wanted to defend your bishop. How uh -huh. However, you do not need to play B3 here because your bishop is already protected, right? Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I the move I suggested, which was bishop d7, is a pretty natural response. However, if you wanted to move your pawn, you could have also played b4, because by playing b4, you're also stopping the queen from getting to a3. Mm, okay. So I just wanted to show you a different idea to something that you suggested. To sort of show you Is that how. something you would have done? Um, honestly, honestly, I think I would have played bishop takes d7. I think I think this was the best move. Oh, okay. But it was just like um, you you thought about you know uh, playing b three. So I just wanted to show you mm -hmm, how mm -hmm. you can move the pawn in a way that this pawn actually becomes defended. I see. Yeah. So if you ever see your opponent like hitting your pawn, and you're currently defending it, if you move it like two yep. squares up, it actually just blocks their entire you know. Oh, move. I do remember that now. Mm -hmm. And I did not think of that either. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay, so I just wanted to show you this as an idea. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so B3, B3 does lose the pawn, which you don't want to do, but B4, 
is a good move. So is bishop takes d7. Would you like? Bishop takes d7 is the best. So queen takes d7. We've got b4. Um, and knight c4. Then a4. Okay, this is good. Knight f6, queen d3. Connecting the rook rows. Yep, yep. <laughs> Um, okay, so we'll just go over very briefly, like why why connecting the rook bros is so important again, because um, I I don't want to say it during the stream because otherwise like uh -huh. it, like it's too much information during your game. But um, you really want to usually bring out the rook from f one to e one. Okay. Because you hit his king. Yeah. Okay, so that's the idea there. If you play rook d one and rook e1, then you've literally got your rooks aimed at his king and his queen. Mm -hmm. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And that's really, really important because um, it's basically like these are the optimal files usually for your rooks. Because first of mm -hmm. all, this is a half open file. So a fully open file is one, for example, where um, there's no open files here. But here, now this is a full open file. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. There are no pawns on it. So basically here, e1 to e8, this is a half open file. Half meaning because there's just like what, one pawn? Yeah, there's one pawn on it. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. That's what makes it a half open file. The bishop doesn't count? Uh, the bishop doesn't count. The okay. bishop can move away at any time. It's a lot more difficult to remove a pawn mm -hmm. than it Got is to it. remove just a bishop. Okay. So that's why it's called the half open file. So once again, some really, really high kind of like terminology. But basically what you want to do is put your rooks on open files or half open files. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So that that's why like queen d3 or like any move where you just move your queen up to connect your rooks are, is so good. Because then it gives your queen a lot more space. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so queen c6, and I, I I know I like gave you gave you kind of like the idea here, but you still found it, which was really really good. Um, you spotted b5, amazing move. So the idea behind b5 is obviously that if the queen has to move away, then he loses the knight. Oops, I'm sorry, didn't mean to do that. If he moves his queen away, then you can take the knight. Right. Mhm. Mm so. When the queen goes to d7, you took the knight. This is accurate. And yeah, so this was the time when instead of playing rook b to e1, mm -hmm. the other rook going to e1. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Because basically right after, I like, you know, you, you played rook to a1, right? Yeah. So if you had originally played rook to f to e1, then you could have done that. And then moved your other rook to a1 and not wasted a move and still had your rook on this long diagonal. Uh, I mean, sorry, long file, long file. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay, I mm -hmm. see it. Okay. So, yeah, these are the files. So, basically, the ones, the columns are the files and the ones across are the ranks. Mm -hmm. And then these, like the, the diag these are the diagonals. Wait. That's the names of them? Yeah, that's the name. So so these, so the these... numbers and the letters are So if I columns say columns and files. Yes, yeah. So there so columns and files are the same thing. And then ranks and rows are the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Um I'll I'll, I'll like literally get write you out a list of all the terms we talked about today so that you can like mm -hmm. I don't know, okay. pull it up if you ever wanna if you, if you if you ever want to um, look at it, but yeah, so so when I say the e file, you're looking at from e, the entire e file. This is the e file. Okay. If I say the second rank, you look at the two, and then you go across second rank. Got it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so you want your rooks like basically. Um, this is why do you do you kind of understand why it's so important for him to castle for people to castle. To get your rook out, right? Yeah, to get your rook out. And also, what happened in your game? Mm -hmm. His king, he didn't castle the right direction, first of all. Um, he already, there's already an open file here. So his king was too weak. He Like, when you castle, you want all the pawns in front of your king. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. And he only has, you know, this, this is like your little fortress, right? But this yep. guy is missing like an entire door. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So you can quite literally just like start pushing all of your pieces towards this king. Okay. Yeah. So that's why it was so important. And um, basically, I guess like, you know, for, for future lessons or anything like that, um, what would be really important to learn is how to checkmate your opponent or checkmating ideas. Mm -hmm. Because rook a1 is a move that you should be thinking like, it's like checks, captures, and threats, right? Like, rook a1 is a threat that threatens checkmate. Like, you're saying, like, just in this scenario, right? Um, yeah, so, I mean, this scenario, this is a threat that threatens checkmate. Mm -hmm. But sort of, like, more generally, you, whenever you're playing these kinds of positions, you want to be looking for moves that threaten something. A lot of the time. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, you know, basically here after c5, um, rook a8 is actually, I think it's actually the, the best move. I think this is a mate in something. It's a mating seven? Mating seven? King c7? Okay, so this is a time when I will pull out, so there's this thing called chess engines, um, you don't have to worry about it right now, but basically, I'm not using my brain for this. I'm actually just turning on the chess engine. Um, there's b6. King takes b6. Uh, bishop f4. e5. Knight takes e5. Knight takes... Wait. Knight takes e5. Bishop takes e5. Bishop d6. Rook b1. King here. And then there's going to be checkmate. Ah. Uh. Ah, but I didn't see that. Obviously. Yeah, obviously. That I didn't see that. Play. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even see what happened. Uh, um, cool. Yeah, that's, that's it's, it's way too dank. Way too dank. Um, okay. I, I didn't see it either. Honestly, as far as I'm <laughs> concerned, you played an amazing move. Uh, Rick A7 was really good just attacking his pawn. I don't know. What, what, what were you thinking with Rick A7? What were you thinking? <laughs> Wait, where were we? Okay, uh, so we moved up because he moved up, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, your your idea um, with rook a seven, yeah. I think it was because at that point I was running out of time, and I was like, I think this is safe. Okay. I like it. That's good. That's good. It's also a really good play. Like you just have a natural way of putting your pieces somewhere where they're good. Like this rook here mm -hmm. is quite literally just, you know, it's got the 7th rank, and you're hitting this pawn. So you're putting oh. a lot of pressure on your opponent. I'm not going to lie, I wasn't even thinking about that. But <laughs> I'll take it. I mean, you know, it's coming intuitively, so that's good. So knight takes e3, f takes e3, king b6. Um, you play queen a4, which is good. You're threatening queen a5 checkmate. King c7, queen a5, king d6, uh, queen b6, king e7. Okay, so once again, what was the pin here? Okay, let me think about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> He's deep in thought, deep in thought. Um, what are you guys thinking? Hold on. Yeah, I think I need to go over more tactics with him because he's got the like right idea for it, but it's just that tactics in is this so hard. in this one move. Yeah, this one move. First oh. of all, what's a pin? <laughs> um, the pin is to trap something so that they can't move it, right? Uh, trap the king or trap a piece so the so they can't move a piece. Kind of, yeah, kind of like kind of like it. Like if he moves it, then he loses something major. Yep, yep. Okay, so would it have been to eat, use the rook to eat the pawn? Yep, exactly. Oh, okay. Yes. So this is a pin, right? Um, once again, it's mm -hmm. just when you have a more important piece. Uh, no, sorry. A less important piece in front of a more important piece. So if you move away the queen, which is legally not possible, then you lose the king. Yep. Right. Got it, got mm -hmm. it, got it. 
I and didn't you can, see that. Yeah. I mean, that's really fine. But you can see why knowing these kind of tactical ideas makes finding these moves easier. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, so 95, I mean, you're still winning, but it was just, uh, you panicked a little, which I can understand. Yep. <laughs> it's fine. It's totally fine. Totally fine. Uh, you, you played really, really well after this. Yep, this was good. Okay, this was amazing. This was, this, you found this fork naturally. Like, you were, like, I, instant. I didn't realize, too, though, like, that I was going to lose my queen, too, <laughs> to be honest. But... <laughs> I mean, um, yep, it's fine, right? It, it's a check, which is the most yeah, important yeah. part. Because if you're checking him, then he can't take your queen. Because he mm -hmm, has to move his king. Mm -hmm. Right. So, king e8. I, yep. <laughs> now I had forgotten D7. about the uh, bishop. <laughs> but that's okay. You took back with the knight here. Because then, if you... Because this way, you don't lose your knight, right? Since he was mm -hmm, attacking mm -hmm. your knight. Okay. And yeah, I mean, basically you played this really well. You you pushed your pawn, I mean, for a promotion. And then, you know, you took his other pawns and then proceeded to promote them. Okay, so in this position, I'm going to finish this game mm -hmm. with you. And you okay. show me how you're going to checkmate me. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm the final boss here, guys. I'm the final boss. He's gonna find it. I believe in him. He's done so well. He's gonna be able to find this. Um. Okay, well, first of all, everything is winning here. So there's nothing <laughs> wrong with your move, but we, we'll keep playing. We'll keep playing. Let, let's, see, let's see where your plan is. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Here. Here. Um. I'll. 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 I'll give you the. I'll give you the idea. Um. <laughs> okay. So to usually checkmate your opponent's king, you need to get him onto either like the the file, like the last file, or okay. the last rank. So basically, if the yep. king's anywhere on the border of the board, it becomes easier to checkmate him because mm -hmm. he is. He doesn't have, he has less squares when he's, for example, um, so let's say I went here, right? If I went here, my only square to go right now is this. Yeah. Or, or here, if the queen wasn't here, but, but those are squares are taken away. So you really want the king on the edge of the board if you're trying to checkmate him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if I go king a7, you're using, so now use this information. You like my king being here because it doesn't have a lot of squares to to um mm -hmm. to go to how would you set up the checkmate right now right now mm -hmm. um uh there's a few ways you can do it and they would all be correct so don't don't be scared at all um okay that it, that's good. That's good. Oh wait, that wasn't it. No, no, no. That was correct. That <laughs> wait, that, that was good. That was good. But you left the corner. I mean, you left the border. Okay, so right now, notice right? <laughs> where where can this king go? If it was uh, my turn, I mean Black's turn. Right now, you could go behind the in front of the knight. Right, that's like and also basically straightforward. Yeah. Yeah, these are the only two squares, right? Yep. So can mm -hmm. you take away this square from me, and only like force my king to go here? Yes, with the rook. Mhm. Mm okay. Now I have my king, king on a five. Uh huh. All right. And I just move it out of the way. Yeah. And that's checkmate. Ah. Uh... I see now. <laughs> yes. Okay. So basically the idea for checkmating with a queen and a rook or with mm -hmm. two rooks or, you know, a queen and a queen, even though that's a lot rarer, is you want to do this thing called the ladder. Um, basically, this is like a, this is like the ladder mate because you're cutting off the king 
with one of your pieces and then you're doing the checkmate with the other. Mm -hmm. So that's with that idea. However, what if I okay. don't put my king to a corner for you? What if I put king b6? Mm -hmm. How are you going to force me to go to a, like the, the corner or the border? Um, the, I mean, the basic idea here is to, you know, get the is, queen to the border. Is that not it? <laughs> oh, wait, did you make a move? I'm sorry. I didn't see it from your stream. Oh, you took the pawn. Wait, the board just stopped updating Hello? for me. Hello? Can you hear me? Uh-oh. Hello? Hello? Oh, wait, whose stream cut out was it? Can you hear me? Oh, God. Wait a second. Can you not hear me? Uh... Let me just give another call. Hello? Hello? Hi, can you hear me? I hear you. Okay, I think I think your stream cut. I don't know what's going on right now. It's okay. It's okay. Don't worry, don't worry. Um I didn't realize that. Uh yeah, I think you made you made this move, right? Uh I just I don't know. Okay, Queen takes E6. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Um okay, so that that that's good. That's good, but what if I wanted you to do the rolling checkmate thing? Like the, the rolling one? Sorry, the latter one, the latter one. Where you're able to get his king here. Like on this oh, on this. I see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> queen takes e6 is also winning, but here let's let's mm -hmm. go over why queen takes e6 is also checkmate. If I go here, what are you going to play? Uh Move the rook. Okay. Yep. Guys, it's his first time. It's his first day of learning chess. Okay. This is like amazing. Oh, really, really close. But once again, I want you to think about it in the way of the ladder. Oh. Mm hmm. Right. Um. Yep. So. Okay. Wait, am I just not seeing your moves or something? Yeah, queen eight oh, two. Oh, you don't see it? Yeah, I, I didn't yeah. see the move, but it's okay. The board got scuffed halfway through. Um, but yeah, queen eight two exactly correct, and that's kind of like how you want to do the ladder. I see. Yeah, so that's perfect. So at a certain point, I mean, if you have that option, mm -hmm. the knight doesn't even matter, right? Mm hmm. Um, yeah, basically, basically, exactly. You could have given up the okay. knight, and it would not have mattered. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, if you're up like a rook and a queen, like anything's yeah, winning. Yeah. But, um, of course, just generally speaking, you don't want to give up material. Like, it's just good practice to not give up mm -hmm. material. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to quickly show you... Wait a second. I'm going to invite you to a new analysis board, because um, I think... I think the current one is a little bit scuffed and then I'm gonna let you do okay. <laughs> whatever you gotta do because yeah, I, I know it's a lot that you, you've been learning today. So um, I don't wanna like overwhelm you. I just hope I remember everything. Well, I'll, I'll write- I feel like I've learned a lot though. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. I think, yeah, definitely retention is probably uh, like one of the hardest things. Yep. <laughs> but I think you're doing an amazing job. So once again, I just want you to do the the ladder mate in this position as okay. white. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. Okay, got this. <laughs> Okay. Oh, that's, yep. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, here, I'm gonna, so right now the king is here, which is the shortest mm -hmm. like corner you can push him towards or like the border you can push him towards. To the right. Uh, to the right, yeah, that, that's one, one way to do it. You could also push him up. Oh, true. <laughs> mm-hmm, I, I can tell that you're trying to push him to the right, but if you play a move like this, I'll go the other direction. Because mm, I see. I'll, I'll always try to put my king towards the center. 
So the way to address this issue now is always think about which, which is a file like you can cut them off from. So you can do either you can cut them off from like the fifth rank or you can cut mm -hmm. them off from the E file. So for example, if you make a move like rook b5, yep. you can notice that your king is unable, black's king is unable to play like his king back up. I see. So if you move your rook here, then the king is no longer able to go anywhere past this so now now like my king's just a little bit you know locked in oh okay i mm -hmm. get it yep okay so just keep doing it yeah keep doing it uh okay that's good all right <laughs> you perfect that's checkmate Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, that is a lot easier to look at it like that. Yeah, so you just want to like slowly push your opponent to the mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. the border. Okay, so I'm going to make this a little bit more challenging for you. Okay. A little bit more challenging. All right. Once again, your turn. Okay. <laughs> Wait a second. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um <laughs> I just realized. Okay, hold on. Um. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. Take your time. All right. <laughs> okay um let's go back to the start so i know you're trying to do the ladder right i'm but, trying to <laughs> right but i am current but as black i'm currently attacking your mm -hmm, rook mm -hmm. so how do you defend your rook in such a way that it doesn't have to concede and let the king get any more squares It doesn't have, doesn't get any more squares. Right. Uh, just mm -hmm. go further away, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Wait, That's an idea. Mean? Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh. Because, for example, if you play rook b five, right? My king just comes over, and if you mm -hmm. play like rook b six, I can just do this. And yep. you haven't made a lot of improvement. But if your rook goes all the way across, mm -hmm. and so I'm gonna teach this in a way such that it's intuitive. If the king goes here. You still can't play rook b6 because the king can just take. Yep. But you can move the rook all the way around. And when the king goes like here, you can I play see. now this. And when he goes here, you can play rook h7. So you do the ladder, right? Mm. Like, like you're just slowly trying to make yep. this ladder. You force the king to go onto the 8th rank. Yep. But you still can't play rook g8. So this is going to take a really long time. This is this is not the fastest. <laughs> this is not the fastest way. Just to be clear, before okay. anybody tells me that, I know, I know it's not the fastest, but I think it makes the most sense with two rooks. So then you move your rook over here, right? Because you want to play rook a8, which would be checkmate. Yeah. If you if your opponent plays king g8, what are you going to play? Um, just send it across. Okay, but to where? No. All right, but if you do this, you can no longer ladder because your other rook can hop over. Oh. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So, so um, basically, what you want to do is like you notice how my rooks were always like not in front of each other. Yeah. So I know yeah. I told you to stack your rooks or have them together mm -hmm. in the, mm -hmm. in the middle game part, but when it comes to the end game part, this position specifically. If you stack them, they won't be able to do much. 
Okay. Right. So the idea here would be to play rook b7 because once again you're going to create this this ladder formation. Yeah. yeah. So you stack basically um you know mostly in the middle game in the opening if you need to like push upon something but when you're trying to push for checkmate you have to have them next to each other <laughs> got it yeah so all right do you want to try well, that again yeah okay i so, think okay all right um here okay so you go again <laughs> okay um <laughs> Wait. <laughs> uh, what was the first step? Well, we have to separate them, right? So, like this. Okay, that's good. Okay, so if your rook is unable to give that check, right? Uh huh. Where can you put it so that it's able to give a check like that? Just up. But if you go up, is it going to be captured? Oh, that rook? Um, oh, wait. I mean, if you go up here, the king can just come back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is the one where I'm supposed to go across, right? Yeah, this is the exact same position. Yeah, okay. There we go. Okay. All right. Okay. Wait. <laughs> okay. This is perfect. Oh, almost oh. there. Wrong one first. Yeah, yeah. So you just just gotta look at the ladder. But otherwise, Damn that was it. perfect. That was perfect. Damn it. You did it. You okay. did it. You oh, did it. You God. got the crest for that one. All right. I mean, I know it's been like a three-hour <laughs> lesson. It's been so long. You must be super tired. So you learned so much today. Honestly, that was just amazing. It was <laughs> oh amazing. God, okay. I'm not shocked that I even did that. I mean, like, I I do hope like you understand the idea. Like memorize. Get the, the idea. Okay. <laughs> Is it? So what happens to me in real games though like i'll be okay and mm -hmm. then like i don't know if it's because i get cocky or <laughs> because <laughs> i'm just not paying attention but then i'll do something and be like oh i knew better but mm -hmm. whoops right you know? so i mean that happens all the time. <laughs> it's okay it's okay yeah no i mean it's been a long it's been a long lesson so you know it's a, it's a lot to review as well okay <laughs> hey, well all right hopefully yeah we'll remember everything and i definitely hope to see you you know play more chess i'm really really excited to you know whether or not you decide to join pod champs or have more lessons always here to well help. i think definitely have to do another lesson at least um <laughs> i don't think we're ready yet all right well i'm always down for that you know all i right. think i think you've made amazing progress like honestly we 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 cover a lot and i'll i'll be writing up like the basic idea so you don't have to like try to pull it out of your brain you know okay <laughs> yeah all right, well thank you you're very very welcome um, i appreciate it will you still be streaming what after yeah uh because yeah I'll... probably a little bit okay yeah i'll just give you the raid because i'm i'm very very hungry <laughs> oh but i don't know if i'm gonna be playing chess though oh that's fine that's fine for now <laughs> oh okay oh, well thank you you're you know, it, it's a great pleasure you know um a lot of my <laughs> chat is huge fan huge fan of your youtube and i have to say after oh gosh you watching... saw all that <laughs> I, I I was watching like for for twenty minutes before before I listened <laughs> your your YouTube videos. Honestly, I think you're singing. You're the what's the one called with the sing? Singing. Yeah, like you were doing imitations of how how to sing like Snoop. Oh, Dogg how to or, sing like your favorite artist. Yes, that one is mm, probably mm -hmm. that probably left the biggest impression. <laughs> okay, well, I'm glad. All right. Um, well, thank you again. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll do this again. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You're very, very welcome. All right. Thank you so much. All right. I'll thanks. Bye. Bye. I'll talk to you later.
All right, guys. Okay. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that lesson. I know it was long, and I know that you know it was it was a lot. <laughs> Honestly, it was it was a lot. It was a lot. Like he learned just so much stuff, and we went from like somebody who never know knew how to play chess to this to this. What is this? This guy. This guy played like a GM. <laughs> this guy played like a GM. Um, you know, it, it, it was just, it was just crazy. It was just crazy. I mean, I'm here like as somebody who, who's coached before, but this is my first time working with Ryan. Obviously, it's, it's my first time working with Ryan. I quite literally have to like kind of gauge sort of like how good he is, and at the same time, while well, like figuring out if he's like accept, like this is this is okay for him. If this level was okay with him, and I'm just glad that. It, it felt pretty okay to him. I mean, I don't know. I might have completely overwhelmed him and he might be like, you know, just like, who is this? What is she doing? But um, I, I do think that he did a really, really good job. And I hope that, you know, everybody enjoyed the lessons. He did amazing. So I really want everybody to go support him. Um, once again, huge shout out to Ryan. He, he's been a YouTuber for a really long time. Most of you guys know of him from there. But he's also now streaming. He's also now streaming and I hope to see him play more chess. So if you guys give him all of your support and love and encourage him like words of encouragement only, then we might see him play more chess. And, I, and that's what I want. That's what I want to see. So I think you guys should really, really be giving him all the support. Um, you know, go, go, go check out his channel as well. Go follow his YouTube channel. I really appreciate everybody for coming here today. Like I said, I'm giving him the raid um, because we were just working with him, so thank you all so much. Um, I don't think I'll do Viewer Arena today because I've already been streaming for a bit. I think like it's a good idea for me to just take the day off because I've been feeling so burnt out. I'm really, really sorry. We'll do Viewer Arena tomorrow. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll do Viewer Arena tomorrow because, because there's, there's now time um, tomorrow to do it. So I hope that everybody enjoyed the lesson. Um, yeah, I, I do think I've been feeling really, really burnt out from, from playing chess recently. So I just think that it's important for me to take some time off from playing the game. Um, you know, uh, and like, like, I just want to say, I, I know you, I know once again, 99.9% .9 of you guys are really amazing and really supportive. But when somebody is starting out, even for myself, even, even for all the games we play, um, let's, let's keep it easy. Let's keep it chill on the back seating, okay, chat? Let's keep it easy on the back seating, not just for me, but also for Ryan, for all the people who are just starting out in chess. It's it's a lot of pressure to do something on stream in front of like however many thousand people. And, um, you know, playing like playing is something totally new. He deserves so much respect for it. And at the same time, if I lose some of my chess games, it's okay. It's okay. So I, I've just been feeling a little bit burned out from chess and I, I, I want to take a break. So I'm going to do more stuff like sub battles, I guess, or, or view arenas or just playing subs. Um, just, just something a lot more chill. So I hope everybody enjoyed today's lesson. Once again, you guys are, are, are amazing people. And I just want, I like, I like, it's fine to suggest moves, but like, you went from like zero to 1,200 in one day. Like tomorrow he'll be 2,400. Let's relax here. Let's relax here. Um, so thank you all so much. And if you're not following, toss me a follow. I am going to be a coach for the upcoming Pog Champs. I am also, oh, hello 2511. <laughs> yeah, he, he's, he's learning and kicking ass. So thank you all so much for coming. Um, for once again, for those of you who don't really know me, I am primarily a chess streamer, but I also do a lot of League, I do a lot of Valorant, I play a lot of variety games, so everybody just be very supportive of people. So thank you all so much for coming here today, and you guys are amazing. I will be seeing you all tomorrow. I am a chess streamer, occasionally. I am a chess streamer. Um, so, I mean, in terms of my chess, I'm like 2400, 23, like 2300, 2400, Almost 2400. I actually haven't gotten there in like a while, but usually that's where I vary. And I think just trying to get 2400 has burnt me out so much that I just, I, I just want to take a little bit of a break. But I'll be playing like subs and stuff. So once again, <laughs> thank you. Oh my God, still talking about PTSD. Oh no, oh no. Uh, but okay, once again, I'm going to raid Ryan. So thank you all so much for coming, guys. Please do check out his channel. Check out his YouTube if you haven't already. 
and send him all your love. Send him, send him so much support. Tell him he did a good job. He did a good job today. He did an amazing job. So thank you all so much for coming. I will not be streaming later tonight unless I decide to play League for some reason later at night. Uh, but otherwise, I might actually play League tonight. I really don't know. I really don't know. Um, Andrea is recovering from Valorant, so I mean from her voice, so no Valorant today. But I might just decide to solo queue or something later tonight. So once again, thank you all so much for coming. Let's go support Ryan. Okay, let's go, guys. Thank you all so much for today.